Hey guys, welcome to Tony's Autos. In this video, we'll be showing you Shopify e-commerce course, the ultimate guide. So we have a lot of topics here to discuss. So let's start with how to set up a Shopify store on phone. So shutting, setting up your Shopify store via your phone is actually pretty easy. But in this case, uh, we first need to install the Shopify mobile app. In this case, go ahead and visit Google Play Store and download Shopify mobile app. Now, if you already have it, make sure that you have the latest version of it. Now, in this case, how do we actually start using it? So from here, what we need to do is we need to open up the application itself and you should see this uh, page here. Now in this case, you have the option to get started and or log in. Now, if you choose get started here, you'll be able to see the next page where in this case, it's going to ask you to uh, basically uh, th something about or in setting up your store. Now, at the end of through all of this one, it's going to ask you to create your account. So in this case, go ahead and answer whatever that they are going to ask you in here. So in this case, you could go ahead and just click on skip here or basically if you want to answer it, you can go ahead and do that. And at the very end, again, you do choose your um, account or create your account. But since I already created my account, I want to actually log in into my account. So let's just go back into the main page here. Just click on lock in. And from here, we want to start logging in. So I actually use my Google account here to uh, basically create my account. So let's just choose our account here. So I actually use my Google account here as a means to log in. So let's just wait for it. So this might take a while, but once it's actually logged in, you should be able to see this section here. Now in this case, this is where you'll be able to see the stores that you have. Now as you can see, there's going to be a few inactive stores and available stores that I have right now. So if you want to create a new store, what you need to do here is you just need to click on the plus button that you see at the top right of your screen. And from here, this should actually redirect you to this page here again. Now in this case, it's going to ask you, let's start it, which of these descriptions describe you. So in this case, if you're just getting started, choose the I'm just getting started and just click on next. And from here, where would you like to sell? So in this case, I want to say I want to sell on an online store and just click on next. Now from here, what do you plan to sell first? So in this case, maybe I want to say this is going to be a product I buy or make myself and just click on next. And we want to choose the location of our store. Now, maybe I want to go ahead and choose this one. Just click on next. And from here, it's going to start creating my story, which is something really, really cool since, since you could actually do this on your mobile phone. Now, just some information. While you can create your store via your mobile phone, there are some certain limitations that you won't be able to do here. Now, in this case, this is going to be the page that you'll see here. In this case, you'll be able to set up your account. Now, in this case, you have the setup guide section here, which in this case, it's going to ask you to add products, customize your online store, name your store, set your shipping rates, remove your store password, and share your products. Now, in this case, uh, this is going to be the main homepage here. So if you click on your name or your store at the top left, you have the My Store section. So if you can, if you want to create another store, you can go ahead and click on Add Store here. Or if you want to access your settings, you can go and choose Settings here and change certain uh, details here. Like for example, your store details, your plan, your billing. So for example, if you want to change certain aspects on your store, you could go to store details here. And from here, change your store name, store phone, add your store phone, and your store currency, your time zone here, your order IDs and suffix, and a lot more. Now, in this case, you could also change here. Like for example, uh, if you want to uh, add or change your uh, payments here like for example uh changing your payments here or adding payments is a great way for you to expand how your customers could actually um uh, pay for something in your store now in this case let's just go back here since uh, we first have to uh, discuss uh what are the things that we give you here again this is going to be home page it's going to be where a thing is going to be uh first being uh, seen and uh, the next icon here is we have our orders so if you if you already set up your store this is where you'll be able to see quickly see what are the orders that you have so you don't you won't have to visit the actual official website for you to see what are the orders that you have right now now, I also have the product section here, which in this case, you could add your products or new products by your mobile phone. So maybe I want to add a new product here. So in this case, you could add your media, your title, the price on it, and the sales channel here, variants and shipping, category, vendor, and tags. 
Now at the right side here, we have the tree bar icon, which in this case, we have the other things that we could do here. Like for example, customers, content, analytics, marketing, discounts, and settings. Now, if you're looking for changing like shipping or the payment methods like what we saw before, you need to go to the home page here, click on the MS or the uh, store that you have or store icon. In this case, go to settings. Now, again, you should be able to see your billing here, which in this case, this is where you'll be able to uh, see your current plan or how you're actually paying for certain services that you have on uh, your Shopify account or store here. And in this case, we also have the taxes and duties here, which in this case is something really important if it's, uh, if you want to apply taxes into your store, which is uh, make it a lot more legal. Now, in this case, we also have the other option here. Like, for example, if you want to use a custom domain for your store, you could go to domains here and set your domain or buy your domain in here. Now, we also have the brand notifications, custom data, languages, files, and a lot more. So basically, uh, what you're seeing here is uh, most likely the basic settings that you could change on your store, which is something a lot. So if uh, if you're going to ask what are things that you could change here, there are a lot of things that you could change here. But the thing here is with the mobile version of Shopify here, uh, if you're going to ask how do you customize your online store here? So if you click on customize your online store here, it's going to give you or redirect you to the section here, which in this case, you'll be able to uh, edit your online store. Now, if you want to uh, basically uh, view your store, you could go ahead and click on the eye icon at the top, right? But in this case, uh, for you to start editing your store, like for example, changing images or changing the banner, how it actually looks like, choosing a team for your store, then in this case, you won't be able to do it via the mobile app. But if you just want to, like for example, add products, change certain settings on it, or uh, change basic details about your store, well, well, the mobile app here can help you. But if you're looking into customizing your own store here via your mobile phone on your mobile phone or the mobile app here, it is not possible. You need to access the web version for you to customize images on your actual store or uh, customize pages in your actual store or basically change your code if you're familiar with coding or programming in your uh, store here. But in this case, uh, those are the things that you can change here or set up in your Shopify store. Just the basic things here, like the settings, the products, the orders, or even the content or analytics if you want to view that. But yeah, so you could also add apps here if you want to. In this case, you should be, you should be able to add GG Drop Tripping, Printify, Smile, and a lot more. Shopify Contact As Page Tutorial for Beginners. In this case, how do we actually uh, add or edit our contact page here? So in this case, the first thing you want to do here is you want to go to Shopify.com and log into your account and access your store. Now in this case, uh, typically when we go to our online store here, just to give you some idea, uh, by default, any Shopify store that you create actually has the capabilities or they already have a contact page already. So in this case, as you can see in my nav, this is a default one. So contact page should be available. So as you can see, it is the default one. But as you can see, the contact page itself is quite bland. And in this case, if you want to add some text on it, maybe add some images, if you want to, uh, you could go ahead and do or follow these steps I'll be showing you. So there's actually two ways of editing your contact page here. So let's go ahead and go back into our Shopify store here. And from here, we want to go to online store. And in here, what we need to do next is uh, we want to go to pages. So this is the first method that I'll be showing you how to add edit your contact page. So in this case, uh, I want to actually choose the contact page here. Let's go and choose contact. Now the thing here is there are different components here. So first is the title. So by default, every pages that you create here have their own titles and templates that they use. So the contact page actually has its own template that they could or basically use. So if you change this to a different one, like for example, default page here, you can save. Uh, when you actually go back into your contact page, it's now going to look different because we are now or we no longer are using the contact page template. So uh, as you can see, uh, Shopify would take some time to load up properly. 
So it might take some tries before it is actually updated. But in this case, uh, typically when you actually switch over to a different template, uh, the changes, or in this case, uh, this one, as you can see, the section for contact page is now missing. But whenever we actually revert this back into contact, it should revert back into our previous change. Now, the first way to edit your uh, contact page here is we want to actually go to content section. So for example, maybe we want to add ours here. Ours, we operate. And from here, you could go ahead and just add like, for example, 8 a.m. to uh, let's just say 7 p.m. Uh, just an example here. And maybe, maybe I want to say this from Monday. And yeah. So in this case, you can even add images or change or edit your text here, making bold, making italic or add underline on it. And you could also add images by clicking on the tree dot icon here and basically inserting your own images or videos if you want to, even insert tables if needed. So let's go and click on save here to save our changes. And we actually go back into our page here and reload, as you can see, it, is, it now has the RSV operate. Now in this case, this is the first method on editing your contact page, but what is the other way? So the other way is to directly uh, edit the template here, but in this case, directly to, uh, editing the template itself can actually affect all the pages that is using the contact page template here. So if you're not, or if there are no other pages that are using the template here, uh, in this case, you could go ahead and start editing your template. So to do that, you need to go to Teams here, and you want to go to uh, customize. And from here, what we need to do is we need to go to home page. Let's go and click on the drop down here. We want to go to uh, pages. And from here, choose the contact us template. Now in this case, you could go ahead and add images. Like for example, let's go and click on add section. And for example, if you want to add a, uh, let's just say a slideshow here, you could go ahead and add a slideshow underneath or above them. So to make it more fa I'll look, uh, make it look more fancy if you want to. So let's just move it up here. So as you can see in out in here, you go sit, you can go ahead and click on save. You could go ahead and customize your image slide here, but just an example. Let's go ahead, go ahead and save this one. And we actually go back into our contact page. As you can see, we now have a slider before the actual contact page section here how to add an FAQ page on Shopify. In this case, how do we add an FAQ page on our Shopify website? Well, adding one is actually pretty simple, but we first need to discuss how pages and templates actually works in Shopify. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to go to our Shopify admin page. So go to shopify.com, log in into account and access your store. Now from here, you want to go to online store. And from here, you want to go to pages. Now, in this case, typically when you create a page by clicking on the add page at the top right of the screen that you have right now, you have the option to add a title as well as the content here. So just to give you an idea here, so I'm going to actually add a FAQ title here. So you should be able to also add content here. For example, I'm just going to say sample F FAQ. Now you now need to choose our template. Now with all websites or all uh, templates or teams that you have on Shopify, they all have a default page. So if you choose this one, you have the option to change a few things. Like for example, you have the option to add content into it. But if you want to change a few things on the actual uh, page, so if you actually edit it by team section, which I'll be showing you later on, it will be kind of hard. So let's go ahead and click on save. Now, from here, for you to view your website or your page here, what we need to do is we just need to click on the view page. Now, it should show you FAQ in sample FAQ. But what if we want to add like collapse, collapsible um, pages or, for example, collapsible sections, which in this case will actually reveal the FAQ or the questions or the answers for that specific question. So it will be kind of different here because uh, with this uh, type of uh, way is you only have the option to add like basic text and images into it because we are using a template here, which is the default one. So anything that you change within the default page template here will also be affecting all the pages that is using or all the pages that you already created using the default page here will also have that specific change applied to them, which is we do not want that. So we want a specific one that we could customize for our um, FAQ page here. 
So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and delete this one first. Let's go ahead and choose this one. Click on actions here, click on delete page and click on delete page. Now let's go to teams here under online store. And from here, let's go ahead and click on customize. Now from here, what we need to do next is we need to actually uh, add a new template. So at the top section, you should be able to see the homepage section. Let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, what we need to do is we need to go to the pages section here. Now from here, what we need to do is we need to click on the create a template option here. Since we already have the default one, we want to have a specific one here. So for example, I'm going to actually base the uh, template that we're creating or creating right now from the default page that we already have right now. Now, in this case, we are going to name this as FAQ template. From here, let's go ahead and click on create template. Now, in this case, once you've created that, let's go ahead and uh, go to our previous pages. So let's just go ahead and click on exit at the top left. From here, let's go to pages again. And from here, let's go and click on the add page at the top right. Now from here, let's go and add FAQ here, or let's just say this is going to be frequently asked questions. Let's go ahead and complete this one. And from here, so make sure it, that you actually um, correctly spell this one, questions. So let's just complete the spelling here. So in this case, we now need to add a few things here. So if you want to add text here, but I recommend you to, to not add any text here to not affect the actual template. So we added a title here. That's good. Let's go and choose the team template here. Let's go and choose FAQ template. Now from here, let's go and click on save. Now, once you've done that, let's go ahead and go back into our homepage here. Let's go and go to online store. And from here, let's go and click on customize again. Now from here, let's go and switch over to the template that we just created. So let's just go ahead and go to our pages and we want to choose FAQ template. Now, as you can see, we now have the frequently asked questions section here. So what we need to do is we just need to add a section here. Let's go and click on the add section. And from here, let's go ahead and add a collapsible one here. So in this case, it's going to be collapsible content. And from here, you could go and add whatever you want. So if you want to further customize your collapsible content here, you could go ahead and click on it. And at the right side here, you have the option to add captions, the heading for it. So let's just say, uh, what, uh, what are your questions? Let's just say it is, is the uh, top section here. And uh, from here, once you've added that, like you go ahead and change the heading size the heading segment left or right here. Let's go ahead and make this in the left section. And from here, you can change the color scheme if you want to add images and uh, image ratio here, uh, desktop layout and all, all of those uh, specific things. So in this case, let's go and choose the collapsible row here. Now, in this case in the collapsible row, we have the option to uh, change the icon. So maybe check mark here, clipboard, diary or whatever. So you could choose a box as well if you want to. So go ahead and choose your uh, icon. So I'm going to choose the default one here, which is going to be the checkbox here that we actually uh, have before. Now you can go ahead and add your row content here. So for example, this is the first answer, answer for this question. So let's just add it in here and from here. Uh, we could go and change the heading as well. So for example, what is this website? As you can see, we now have our content here. So in this case, you can even add a, a specific page for this one. So row content from page if you want to use it. But for now, we are good for this one. Let's go ahead and click on save at the top, right? Just to give you some idea here, we're going to add another one. So this is going to be, uh, what is the second content? So obviously you could add your own questions here, but I'm just going to add an example here, example one here. So for example, this is the second question. Now from here, let's go ahead and uh, see the actual look for it on the actual website, but we also need to add this into our navigation. So let's go and click on save at the top right here. And from here, let's go and click on exit at the top left. Now, what we need to do next is we need to go to navigation and under navigation, we need to go to main menu. And from here, we want to add our FAQ. 
So going to click on add new menu item here, just type in FAQ. From here, we want to choose a page here. Let's go to pages. And from here, let's go and choose frequently asked questions. From here, let's go and click on the add button at the bottom right. From here, you could position this anywhere you want. So if you want to have this as the main navigation as well, you could go and do that. Or if you want to put this under a specific navigation, you could go and do this as well. So I'm going to put this, put this under home. Let's go and click on save menu at the bottom right here. Let's go and visit our store just so you give you an idea here. So in this case, uh, what we need to do is we need to go to home here, click on it, click on FAQ, and you should now be able to see your FAQ page. In this case, uh, that's how you create your own FAQ page for your Shopify store. Remember, all the steps that we did before are really important because if you do not do this or if you miss any steps that we did before, you this page might not work properly or it might also destroy all the all the pages that you've already created for your shop. How to add products to your Shopify store. So it might be kind of frustrating, especially if you're kind of new in Shopify uh, building or adding your products can be confusing. So what are the things that you, you should take in mind? What are the things that you should remember when you're actually adding your products? Well, in this case, we are going to discuss that. So first things first, go to Shopify.com, log in into your account and open up your store. Now in this case, I'm already logged in and I've already have my store open up in here. Now, how do we add our products first? So at the top left of your screen, you should see an option here that says home orders and products. Now, if you want to add products of your products, just click on the product section here. It's going to bring up the products section or pages. Now, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of products that I already added here. So depending on how you add your products, you will be able to see different information here immediately. Now, if you have products, you should be able to see the different uh, information on it or, and the overview information on it. Like for example, the uh, product name here, the status. So if you have it on draft, so meaning if it's in draft currently, that product is not uh, currently active and it's not being for sale, sold or it's not being sold as of this moment. Now we also have the inventory uh, status right now, the sales channel, markets, category, and the vendor itself, which is our store here. Now, in this case, if you want to add a new product, just click on the add product at the top right here. It's going to bring up the add product page. Now, immediately, you will be sh you should be able to see different information here or different sections that you should fill out. So in this case, uh, by default, there is not going to be a uh, going a required field here that you need to fill out in, the, in order to save a product. But in this case, one of the tips that we could give you here is uh, whenever you're adding any product right now, I would suggest you to go through all the fields that is available right now because missing any of the details that you need to add to your product can give or can uh, result in great consequences on depending like for example if you forgot to add a specific detail on that product and when someone actually bought that they would actually dispute that you did include that and whatnot so to avoid any problems on whenever you're uh, selling products or basically um Selling your product itself, I would suggest you to go, go through all of the available fields here and fill out all necessary details. Now, one of those details is going to be the title. Now, a title is going to be something really important. So for, it's, for titles, I would suggest you to uh, make your research first. Like for example, if you have a shirt, so this, the keyword shirt itself is something um, really popular, uh, you could go ahead and use that. So in this case, I want to say this is going to be a shirt itself. So also, I would suggest that if you could further describe what item that you have right now, uh, like for example, anime t-shirt or formal t-shirt or uh, something that would actually describe it further. Now again, the title here is really important because keywords is going to be your best friend here, especially if you're selling something online. Now here we have our description. So as you can see, the description section here is kind of different with the title here because description section is where the information about the product is going to be. Now in this case, you could choose or use the available tools here 
Like for example, formatting, we have paragraph here. We also have the bold, italic, underline, and color here if you want to change those. Now, the reason why it's actually a kind of different here, uh, you could basically customize. Like for example, if you want to add an image on your description, you could go ahead and do that. Like for example, there's specific sizing for this product. You could go ahead and uh, just add an image here. Just click on it. And from here, you could choose whatever image is already available. But if you want to upload if I, uh, image here, just click on upload file. And from here, you can choose whatever image that you want to use. Like for example, I previously used a, a short a shirt formatting, men's shirt size here. Let's just use this one, click on open. And we'll be able to add that specific photo. So choose this one, click on insert image. And once you've done that, as you can see, we now have our sizing charts here. Now, for the description section, I would suggest you to make sure that you describe your product as you uh, as you can, like any specifics, like uh, for example the uh, sizes and any of uh, like if it's made of cotton or the material itself that you use. Now, moving on, we also have the media section here. Like for example, you have a, a model post for a specific product that you have. Like uh, for example, a model is wearing a t-shirt that you have right now or the product itself. You could go ahead and click on upload new here. And from here, you could upload your images or videos. Like for example, I want to say, uh, this, this is just an example. I want to upload this image here. Just click on open. And from here, you should be able to see the image. So you could upload multiple image here. Just click on add again. And you should be able to add different images. Like for example, you want to use this one, click on open. As you can see, we now have another image that we could use. Now also at the right side here, we have the product organization. Now products, uh, product category here is something going to be filled up automatically depending on what you add here on the title. But if you have specifics, like for example, you want to add this on cotton or whatnot, you could go ahead and do that as well. Now we also have the product type here. You can add your categories or custom categories here as well. Like I want to say this uh, cotton just for fun. And from here, we could go ahead and just start adding it. So by the way, if you press on enter, it's going to automatically save your product here. So it's going to save itself. Now here, we could choose uh, choose cotton here. Go to vendor here. You could also change the vendor here, whatever is available. We also have the collection here. So by the way, collection is a great way to basically organize your products. Like for example, if your product is part of a set, you could go ahead and create your collection here at the collection section. And from here, you could go ahead and start adding that into that specific collection on the product. So if you want to use collection, make sure that you add your collection first or save your product here and create your collection first and go back into product and choose a collection they want to use. Like for example, I want to add this to men's clothing since I already created that. And from here, you can also add tags. So tags is a great way for you to organize your products. Like if you have the search functionality available on your Shopify store, it's going to make the it's going to make it a lot easier for people to search for that specific product. Now again, like for example, I want to say this is made from cotton. So I want to say just uh, just type in cotton here. Click on add cotton. And as you can see, we now have the cotton tag. So whenever someone actually search for cotton, it's going to uh, pop up or show the result for a shirt here as well since we added the tag here for cotton. Now, I also have the pricing section here. We're in, you have price and compare at price. So think of the price itself as the current price of the product and the compare at price is going to be the original price of the product. Now, in this case, let's say the product itself is going to be $10.00. So the default, uh, the original price is going to be $10, which is the compare at price. And the current price right now is going to be $8. So whenever your shop or whenever this product actually pop up, pops up on your store, it's going to say this product is currently on sale because the original price is $10 and the current price is $8. So there's going to be like a 20% sale on that specific product. Now also have the option here to uh, basically uh, add cost per item. Like it costs you $3 for the item and your profit here is going to be five uh, $5 and the margin is going to be 62.5%. So this one is kind of uh, helpful if you're going to think about it because right now it's going to show you what profits or margin, margin that you have right now for that specific product. Now also if you want to charge tax on this product, so depending on how you actually uh, set your store here that's going to increase the price or so charge tax on this product when they actually uh, basically uh, check out on the specific product uh, also the managed international pricing here so if you have that like for example uh, you set that in in your store uh, that option should be available to you so click on it it's going to redirect you to that next page 
Now also we have the inventory here. So inventory is something really helpful uh, later on, especially if you're managing uh, your product. So currently we have inventory here. Inventory will be stuck at multiple locations. So if you want to uh, specify a specific location, you choose the location here. So in this case, we have the SQ stock keeping unit and the barcode here. So if you want to add those. So if you want to track a specific quantity on it, just click on track quantity here. And as you can see, we have the following location. For example, uh, currently the store, my store right now is currently located in Manila. So by default, uh, Manila is going to be available here. So by the way, Zendrop is available here as well because I actually installed Zendrop on my shop. So that's why it's available here. Now, yeah. So if you want to track it, you could go ahead and do that. And from here, you could go ahead and change uh, the quantity or what I have right now. Like for example, the available, I have around uh, 10 shirts right now. Just click on save. And as you can see, we now have 10 available shirts and 10 on hand. Now we also have the shipping here. So you have the option to choose if it is a specific physical product or a digital product. So if you disable this one, you don't have the option to add weight. But since this is a physical product, we want to add a option in it and answer it. And from here, we want to add a weight. So maybe you want to say this is going to be a 0.2 kilogram shirt. And if you want to add custom information, just click on it. Add customs information. So where it's going to be from the harmonized system here or H -H -H HS code here as well. Now, if you want to add variants to your shirt, just click on add options like size and color. So maybe I want to add a size here and just choose this one. I want to say this is going to be small. And from here, I want to add another value. I want to say medium. And we also have the large uh, option here so just type in large and from here just click on done to add your variance as you can see right now so if you want to change the specific uh number on that specific product so if you click on it you could you should be able to change the price on that specific variant as well like for example for large you have this around more so let's say uh, the pro the product or the uh, price itself is going to be retained at ten dollars and cost per item is going to be for like four dollars since it's a lot a lot bigger and from here just click on done you should you should be good also a great tip that i could give you here is you have if you have multiple uh, options or uh, you have multiple items here that you want to manage you could go and click on all of this one click on action and from here you need you have the option to edit prices and ed edit skus edit barcodes and for example i want to say edit prices here and you could uh, edit them uh, simultaneously without having the troubles of selecting all of them one by one. Yo, yeah, so if you uncheck this one, you also have the edit option here. So same thing, you want to add edit prices, you have the option here as well. Now uh, here we have the purchase option to so add options to give customers more ways to buy this product. Like for example, if you have, if you want to add more ways for a specific customer to pay for this product, you could go ahead and do that because it, it gives them more option. So if the, if a specific country, a specific payment method is not available, you can add yours here. So yeah, this is this one's kind of advanced depending on what you have or what options you have or what you can provide to customers. You can go ahead and use these options as well. Now we also have the search engine listing here. So whenever someone actually search your product on Google, like this is just an example, someone search for a specific product on your on Google, and this in this case, if they search that, it's going to be that format. So if you want to edit that, you could go and click on edit here. Then you should be able to uh, edit your page title, meta description as well, and the URL handle that's going to be shown whenever they search it on Google. Now in this case, once done, just click on save at the top right, and that should save your changes. And just to give you an idea, I want to go ahead and um, go back into my store and view our shirt. So as you can see, I just load up my store here. Let's just scroll down a bit. And you should be able to see the shirt section that we just added. In this case, let's go ahead and click on it. And as you can see, depending on what you set on your store here. So for example, it's going to be 400 press here. Because it depends on where the location is. A uh, location that you've set right now for your store. So in this case, it's going to automatically convert that. So that's why it's showing 400 Philippine pesos here. But if you change this to another country, like for example, I want to set this to maybe the us or usd here so let's just change this one so now i've set this to australian dollars as you can see we have the eight dollars here like what i told you before since we set this to ten dollars or the uh, compare price to is going to be ten dollars we'll be able to see like the current pro the current uh, product here is currently on sale 
So in this case, depending on what payment method that you set on your account, you they will be able to start adding this to your card or start buying the product itself. But yeah, so that's how you add products on your Shopify store. How to create multiple product pages in Shopify. So creating your own or multiple product pages here can be kind of tricky because there's a few things that we need to do here to basically create our own product page here because usually when you go to the online store section here and click on customize the only way for you to basically edit your product pages is via the product section now the top section here we click on home page and go to products here so usually we go to default products so whenever whatever we edit here whatever images that we add here uh it's going to be applied to any product that you actually open up so it leads to a minimal um creativity on very specific pages like for example you want to uh basically showcase a very specific product like because like for example websites like samsung or huawei or even uh, any major brands out there they have a specific web page for their uh showcasing their main products or they or their products for this season now in this case there's an easy way for us to create those but first thing that we need to do here is we first have to ensure that we have our products and or our collections property set up so top left here you want to go to products and from here you need to start creating your products so go ahead and click on add products and ensure that you filled out all necessary details so that includes the title the description on it so whatever applies for your product like variations make sure that you add it in here now also if you want to showcase a collection of products make sure you create your collection here i'll be showing you how to add that to your product page now, I already have a bunch of collections here, but if you want to create yours or your own collection, just click on Create Collection to the top right, fill out all necessary details here. You can go ahead and add, uh, choose your collection type here. We have the automated here. So in this case, if you're using the automated here, whenever a product actually contains a specific tag, like for example, a product actually contains a specific tag that says art, it's going to automatically include that in this specific collection. Now you also have the option to add the image here and the team template that you could choose from. Now in this case, once you've done that, we could go ahead and basically start creating our page. So what we need to do is we need to go to online store here, go ahead and click on it. And from here, you want to go to pages. Now on their pages, what we need to do is we need to create a new page. So click on add page at the top right here and you need to add your product or the name of that page. Now maybe I want to say this is just an example, but you can name this in whatever. Also, just a quick tip here, whatever title we add here, it will appear on the page that we'll be using later on. So for example, I want to say this is going to be product one or product page here so i'm just gonna just going to name this as product page so since it's the name of or the title of my page here it's going to appear on the page that we'll be editing later on but i want to use this one click on save and once we've saved that we need to go back into our navigation here and we now want to go back into online store now under online store we need to go to customize here and under customize we need to start customizing our page so to do that, we need to click on the home page here and you want to go to the pages section and you want to go to default pages. So by the way, wh uh, whatever template that you actually use for creating that page, that it's, that's where it's going to be located. So since we actually use the default page here, so I'm going to sh just show you real quickly what I'm talking about. So let's just go back to pages, go to product page here. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the team template here. Since since I use the full page here, that's where I'll be able to find it. So yeah, going back here, we are again in the customize. We want to go to home page. We want to go to pages and default pages here. So in this case, what we need to do next is we need to change this one. So this is kind of uh, going to be something different. So at the top left here, you have the preview here. You want to change this one. Click on change and we want to click on the product that we want or the page that we just recently created so in this case we actually created this product page here let's just choose this one so like what i said before whatever title you include on that page that's the title that you see here on your product page 
Now, for us to add our product or our collection, what we need to do is we need to click or look for the section here that says template. Just click on add section. And from here, you have the following options. So you have the option to add a featured collection or a featured product. Like if you only want to showcase one product, choose a featured product here, and it should add this product section. Now, in this case, since we've selected this one, the right side here should change. So we need to click on select product here and we need to choose appropriate product. So that's why I told you to make sure that you properly set it, set it up first because we'll be able to choose it. So if you haven't added your product here, just click on, click on the create product here to create yours. But in this case, since I already created mine, I could go ahead and choose this product here that I want to use. And from here, click on select at the bottom right. And from here, you could go ahead and uh, tinker around here. Like if you want to change the color scheme here, make it black or gray or whatever format that you want to use here, you go ahead and do that. Now, also media, the other stuff that you want to edit here, like padding and a lot more. But if you want to add different sections on it, like for example, I want to add a collection on this one. Since uh, since I'm already uh, showcasing this specific product here, I could add a featured collection here. So same thing, what we need to do is select our uh, very top here and we want to choose our collection. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to select a selection here at the right section, look for collection, click on select selection, and we want to maybe use the clothing collection here, which is the, the something that is connected to our first product here. And from here, you could go ahead and click on select at the bottom right. And again, you could change a few things, add descriptions on it, heading size, and a lot more. Even if you want to further customize it, like make it more artsy, add your own images, showcasing it, even add more details since this is a very specific or specialized page for you. Now, once you've added all your details, just click on the save button at the top right here to publish it. And from here, what we need to do next is we now need to inc indicate or include this into our web page itself because we only created this page here. It's not yet connected to our page itself. So in this case, we want to exit this one, click on the top left. And from here, we want to go to navigation. Now under navigation, we want to go to main menu here since we want to add a new navigation. And from here, just click on add menu item. Now in here, what we need to do is we need to add our details. So maybe we want to say special offer. So this is going to be something that we are offering something special on. So in here, we want to click on the search or paste link section. And we want to go to pages here. And from here, choose the product page that we just created. So we just created this, click on it. And from here, click on add. And as you can see, it's now added. So in here, just click on save or save menu to save our changes. And once we've done that, we could go ahead and view our store. So just a few information here, it might not appear immediately and you might need to reload your page uh, again and again until it's uh, is seen. But as you can see right now, a special offer is now visible on my webpage. Now, whenever you click on this specific navigation here, we should be able to see our product as well as a section for featured collections. So yeah, so depending on how you link it in your website, you can even add links or buttons into your website here. So again, depending on how you set up your website here, you'll be able to link that specific page. How to add buy now button on the Shopify product page. In this case, for us to add a buy now button on our Shopify page, we need to actually install an app for this one. Let's go and click on settings at the bottom left. I want to go to apps and sales channel and click on Shopify app store at the top right. Now, from here, what we need to do is we need to actually search for the following, which is going to be buy, just press and enter. You should be able to see the buy button channel. Let's go ahead and click on this one. Let's go ahead and click on install. Now, don't worry, this app is free, so you don't, you don't need to pay for anything. So in this case, let's go and click on install again. And once it's actually installed, we should be able to start using the actual app. Now, the great thing about this app is it actually allows you to create a buy button. Let's go and click on buy now or buy uh, create buy button. And from here, we could either create, create a buy button for a product or for a collection. So for now, let's go and click on product buy button. Now from here, maybe you want to create a buy now button for the following item. So let's go and click on select. 
Now from here you can change the buy button here. So in this case we have the basic, we have the classic, we have the full view here. So depending on what type of buy button you want to create. So in this case we have the action when people click. So whenever the uh, buy button is click, what does it actually do? Does it add the product to cart, direct to checkout, open product details? So in this case, you go and check or use whatever option here that you want. So for example, I just want to say, uh, I want to direct to the checkout here. Now, the layout is going to be basic. Again, you can change this if you want to, but I'm going to change it to classic. Now, the buy button style here, you can change the color itself, the button text, the button width. So for example, you want to make this a lot longer. Button corners, if you want to, I'll make it rounder here. And in this case, I want to make this or uh, make it blue, maybe. Now, in this case, you could go and change the, bu the button text as well, the size if you want to, but I'm going to keep this as is. Let's go and uh, go back. We also have the layout here, which allows you to change the product title, the pricing, so the actual details of that product. So you could go and make your changes here. Now, we also have the shopping cart here if you want to uh, change it. Like for example, on the right panel, this is what the shopping cart will look like. If you want to update that, the background color, the body text, if you want to. Now, you also have the advanced settings, which allows you to either redirect to in the same tab or open pop-up window. So whenever uh, your checkout actually appears here. So I'm going to uh, keep this as in default, so the open pop-up window. Once you're done, click on next at the top right. And you want to go ahead and just click on copy code here. Now, in this case, once you have your copy code, you could go ahead and uh, paste this in your other website, like for example, in Wix and uh, Squarespace or even WordPress if you have that website. Now, you need to access the actual files for it if you want to really integrate it. So just to give you an example, I'm going to create a new page here. So let's just copy, click on copy code here, click on exit, and we want to go to online store go to pages and I want to create a dedicated dedicated page for this like for example you want to publish an article for it let's go and click on add page at the top right and let's just say there's going to be a advertisement for a product now from here what we need to do is we need to switch over to show HTML instead paste our code here and once you've pasted that you can go ahead and show editor again and it should show you what it's going to look like. But again, it's not going to show it immediately. So in this case, you could go ahead and uh, save this one. So for now, let's go and click on save. It should now be saved. So you could go and click on view page. Now, as you can see, we now have the buy button in here. How to add currency converter in Shopify. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to go to our Shopify store. In this case, you need to log in and access your store itself. In this case, what we need to do is we have to first ensure that we already added products into our store. So at the left panel here, go to products. And from here, make sure to click on the add product button that you be seeing. But in this case, I already have a lot of products here. Let's go ahead and start adding our currency converter into our Shopify store. In this case, for us to do that, we need to add an app because by default, Shopify does not have that feature installed. Now, we need to install an app for that. In this case, at the bottom left, go ahead and click on settings. And from here, you need to go to apps and sales channel and choose the option that says Shopify App Store. Now, it should open up the App Store or Shopify App Store here. You just need to type in the following, which is going to be currency, currency converter. Now, in this case, it's going to give you different applications that you could use. And in this case, you just need to choose the uh, application that you want to use. So there's going to be a lot. So there are applications that is that has free plans available. They also have the free version that you could use here, like Bucks Currency Converter Pro, which has a lot of reviews on it, which is 4.9, which is uh, actually pretty good. But in this case, go ahead and choose the application that you want to use. But in this case, I'm going to use Box Currency Converter Pro Plus. In this case, let's go and click on it, click on install. And once you hit on it, it should initiate the installation process. Now, you just need to hit on the install button that you see at the bottom right here. And once you've done that, you should be able to have the application installed into your Shopify store. Now, the steps here are not actually final. We still have to do a bunch of few things here for us to get started. So first things first is we need to uh, basically complete 
the onboarding process here. So in this case, you need to explore. So let's go ahead and click on the uh, get started button here and it's going to give us the uh, onboarding process. So first is we need to set up the money format. In this case, what you need to do is just click on the setup button here. It's going to give you some information and some details that you have to uh, do. So first things first is we need to go to our Shopify settings in general. So we need to go back into our previous page here. You could go ahead and open up another tab for your stores so that you have the uh, uh, Ver uh, verification or the reference here on a one on the window so we need to go to settings and general so in this case go to settings here and from here make sure that you're in general in this case go ahead and scroll down a bit until you see your store currency now from here what we need to do is we need to change the formatting and we need to copy and paste the following modified money formats in html with currency now in this case what we need to do is we need to go to the store currency click on three dot icon click on change currency formatting in this case we need to actually go back one page here so you have html with currency let's go ahead and click on copy let's go ahead and go back here so in this case, you could go ahead and just click on the following and paste it in the following format here. In this case, once you've done that, what we need to do next is we need to copy the HTML without currency. Let's go and click on copy. And from here, we need to uh, go back into currency without currency, enter it in here, and we should be good. Now, once we've done that, we are now ready to uh, go. So let's go ahead and click on save to save our changes and from here we just need to go back into our store here and from here just click on next i have done this now in this case what we need to do next is we need to enable the team extension app extension let's go ahead and click on enable click on the uh, or follow the following steps which is you need to go to team app set extension settings enable box and save now in this case what we need to do is we need to go back into our previous page here Go to online store here, and from here, what we need to do is we need to choose the option that says customize. Now, once we've done that, we need to go to the left panel here and click on app embeds. Now, from here, just enable the box application here. Once we've done that, click on save at the top right, and we are now ready to go back. Now, in this case, once you've done that, click on I have done this. Now, once we've done that, what we need to do next is we need to enable the app itself. Click on enable, and from here, it's going to give you the uh, following steps here. So just click on the enable the app option and that should complete the whole onboarding process. In this case, you have the following uh, select currency here. So you could go ahead and click or, or select the currencies they want to use and even have the following uh, options. Like for example, with a currency symbol or with a currency symbol as well. If you have the active instant loader, if you want to enable that or the cart notification, if you want to enable that as well. Now, also have the, a lot of uh, things that you could enable here, advanced price rounding, advanced custom position set placement, and advanced options, which is custom CSS, custom triggers, and a lot more. Now, in this case, you could go ahead and just edit whatever that you want to edit here. But uh, yeah, if you want to edit your uh, settings here, just click on settings to access those settings that you want to edit. So for example, um, yeah. So this is what you, you are going, going to look like. So if you want to say the mobile, this is what it's going to look like. So in desktop, this is what it's going to look like. Now for design, you could go and go to the design tab here. You have the teams, the flags if you want to, the team here, which is rounded, team customizations if you want those. And yeah, so you also have the display here if you want to change the desktop position. So we have floating, you have the mobile position and the other stuff that you could change as well. But once you've done that, you could just basically go back into online store here and click on the view online store here. But yeah, so once you're in your store, as you can notice at the bottom left of your screen, you should see your currency. Now in this case, let's just go into one of our, our products here. Let's go to catalogs and access one of the products that I have right now. So for example, I have this t-shirt here. So at the bottom left, let's go ahead and change this to a different one. So maybe I want to say I want to change this to USD. So let's go ahead and choose USD here. It's going to change that to USD or even Euro if you choose that. And uh, yeah. So in this case, that's how you change your currency. By the way, I still have this AUD, so it looks like I made some mistakes on mine. So it's uh, recommended that you go back here and go to store details. From here, go back into your uh, section here, click on three dot again, go to change currency formatting and change it again. As you can see, we have a double uh, section for that. So in this case, once you see that, you can go ahead and just basically click on save and remove any of the excess here. And yeah, so 
yeah so that's about it how to add portfolio to shopify so in this case you might be wondering how do you actually add a portfolio uh, section on your shopify website well this one is actually pretty easy and we'll be using a different website for us to add that but first things first is we need to access our editor so in this case go to shopify.com log in into your account and you want to go to your online store section here now from here what we need to do next is we just need to hit on the button that says customize here now we won't be changing the code itself we just need to customize and view the editor itself now once in here we need to go to the appropriate website which in this case is going to be elfsite.com now from their website what we need to do is we need to create our account or log in into your account by the way you could even use your google account to create your account or just basically sign in in this case once you've done that what we need to do next is we need to look for widgets now the top left here go ahead and choose widgets and from here what we need to do is we need to look for the appropriate one so in this case go ahead and click on widgets so that you'll be able to see the widgets web page here and from here what we need to do next is we need to search for portfolio then in this case just type in portfolio and you should be able to see the widget for portfolio in this case let's go ahead and click on it and from here what we need to do next is we need to start editing our widget now in this case there are going to be some elements that you can change in the widget itself but for now let's just wait for it to load up properly now from here what we need to do is we need to choose our template in this case you have the product photographer here we have web designer video production so in this case just choose the appropriate one for you so for now we'll be using the illustration option here now from here what we need to do next just click on continue with this template and you can just basically change the images that you see here in this case you could even choose this image here so whenever you click on a specific image here you can change the name itself the category for it the year description the project details and even the website if you have those now you could even add pictures or videos here if you want to and even change the already existing photos in here now in this case you could also add the preview picture here if you want to as well so let's just go back to content here now in this case you could just change the categories the widget title itself so there's going to be a bunch of customizations that you could try in here but in this case you could even change the layout itself like grid masonry list you also have the project option here which in this case helps you to uh, determine the project style now you also have the project info to display and action to project click here now you could change the action on project click info will display on pop-up and even change the styles here if you want to like the portfolio style here the backer color text color the pop-up custom css if you want to include that or if you're familiar with css you can add that and custom js if you want to as well but in this case so once you've added all the customiz customizations that you want go ahead and click on add to website for free and it should redirect you to another page here which in this case is going to be the actual uh, editor itself in this case uh, let's go ahead and just click on the publish at the top right all right screen of your screen and from here you should be able to see different plans that you could actually get now in this case we'll be getting the free plan here which includes one widget no projects only bug fixes and unlimited websites so we could use this widget here now in this case let's go ahead and click on select here but if you want to use a basic pro or premium here you can go ahead and do that but for now let's go ahead and choose the free one in this case you should see this embed code section here let's go ahead and click on copy code here let's go back into our shopify store and from here let's just scroll down a bit click on add section and from here what we need to do is we need to look for a specific section here which is going to be custom liquid in this case it should uh, redirect you to the bottom here in this case go to the right section here click on right uh, liquid code paste your code uh, that we just recently copied and once you paste that click on anywhere on your screen as you can see right now this is the current look of our portfolio now in this case again if you want to customize the look of your uh, widget here you can just go back to offside and customize anything that you want to but in this case that's about it you have to add testimonials slider to shopify so in this case we'll be showing you a ways or different ways to add testimonials into your shopify store so first thing we need to do here is we need to go to shopify.com and log in into your account and open up the store that you want to add your testimonials now in this case we have this website here and our store here so first thing or first option that i'll be showing you is to install an app via the app store for shopify 
Now, in this case, by default, the testimonials option on Shopify is not available, so we need to install a application for that. So in this case, you want to click on the app section here, and immediately it's going to add the apps tag here. And from here, just type in the following, which is going to be testimonials, and just press on enter. It's going to open up the Shopify app store. And from here, you should be able to see different applications that actually uh, gives you the option to add testimonials. So there's going to be different applications here that you could use, like for example, the looks, uh, product reviews and photos, reviews, importer, testimonials, and a lot more. But usually this applications doesn't actually come for free. So sometimes they come with a specific uh, free available plan, but it's going to be something that's going to be really limited and you won't, do, uh, you won't be able to do much on it. And yeah, so you could choose whatever application that you want to use here. And from there, it's actually pretty easy. There's a whole onboarding process on the application itself. So you just need to follow the steps that they'll be giving you. And from there, you should be able to add the testimonials on your shop. But in this case, we also have another option here, which is going to be outside. So outside is a great website for you to build widgets that you could add into your stores uh, without having to code anything. So without coding anything, you'll be able to immediately add whatever you want. Or well, for example, you, have, you want to add testimonials, you can do this on outside. So you have two options here. So you have the option to log in or sign up for free. So by the way, the website itself is going to be outside.com. Now in this case, if you click on sign up for, uh, free here, it's going to give you three options. So you have the manual way of continuing with your email, or you could go ahead and continue with your Facebook account or with your Google account. So choose whatever account or method you want to use here. But since I already have my account, I'm going to go ahead and log in into my account. And from here, I'm just going to choose my account. But once I'm logged in, we are now ready to add our applications or our widgets. Now, first things first is going to be the home page or the admin page for outside. So the first thing is we need to add the application for testimonials slider here. Just click on add new app. From here, go to search. Just type in testimonials. Just press on enter. And from here, choose the option for testimonial slider. Now, once you click on it, it's going to load up the next page we're in. And you'll be able to start creating your widget. Now, in this case, they have different options here. Like for example, we have the slider, carousel, cards. So whatever format you want to use here, you could go ahead and use that. Now, we also have the customer story here. If you want to uh, basically uh, make it more personalized and intimate, so you could use this option here. Now, for example, we want to use this slider here. And from here, just click on continue with this template. Now, from here, you could go ahead and start editing the testimonials that you have. You could even uh, edit the text itself, the name from uh, the other of it, the caption, the date uh, on it, the picture, and a lot more. Now, if you're done, just click on done at the top right here, and you can go ahead and edit all those details that is available here. Now, also, you have the option to uh, click on the three dotted icon here, which is an action. So you have the duplicate and delete options. So if you want to add additional testimonials, just click on add testimonial here. We also have the layout here if you want to change the layout for the testimonials. Now, here we have our uh, image here for testimonials. So show captions, uh, show verified badge if you want to add that. Also have the appearance here. So if you want to change the color for it, as you can see, you will be able to change uh, some aspects on it. So if you want to do that. Now we also have the option to change this to dark if you want to use that. And the settings here, which is uh, has the option for changing the language, the schema, the sorting. So open links in UTF if you want to enable that as well. But in this case, once you've done that, uh, once you've edited all the uh, things that you need to edit here, just click on the publish button at the top right of your screen. And from here, it's going to say changes were published. Now, in this case, what we need to do is just hit on close at the top, right? And it's going to redirect us back into our dashboard here. Now, from our dashboard here, make sure that you're under testimonial sliders and you are able to see the testimonial slider or widget that you just recently created. Now, this case, just click on install here and we have different options to integrate this into our website. So we have a Shopify option here, but what I like to do here is I could actually use the copy code here. So just go ahead and click on copy code here and we could go back into our store, go to online store, go to teams, click on customize. 
and from here we could just basically add a section so maybe we want to add a section here for a very specific section like for example a custom liquid here go ahead and click on that and you could just basically paste your code here once you've done that hit on save at the top right and usually it's going to reload itself and you should be able to see the changes that you've made now and here what we need to do is we need to exit just click on exit at the top left and from here let's just view our online store here and from here you should be able to see your changes so typically it might take some time so just wait for it to load up but once it loads up you should be able to see your testimonies here as you can see right now now yeah so depending on how you actually edit your uh, testimonials on outside here the details should be updated but that's about it how to add a video background banner to shopify homepage so the first thing that we need to do here is we need to access our shopify homepage here now once in here we now need to access a bit of code here so in this case at the left panel go to online store and from here go to teams and under teams what we need to do is we need to click on the tree that icon here and from here you need to click on the edit code option now from here what we need to do is we need to uh, basically go to a specific section here so in this case you need to scroll down a bit here look for sections open it up and click on add a new section now from here choose liquid and we want to name this as let's just say a video background now once you've done that let's go ahead and click on done now from here once you've created your file we need to paste our code so you'll be able to get your code from the following website here so we'll be linking this website here in the description so make sure to check that in this case once you've done that what you need to do is you need to copy every code that you see here so in this case let's go highlight everything that we see here and once, once we've done that let's go ahead and click on copy or i click on it click on copy go back to your store here select everything here delete it and paste the code now once you've done that what we need to do next is we need to save this so make sure that the code that you've pasted is actually correct so let's go ahead and double check it but in this case let's go ahead and go back into our file here so yes, let's go and click on the save at the top right here and once you've done that what we need to do is we need to exit our store here and from here what we need to do is we need to go to teams click on customize that you see there and from here what we need to do is we need to go to the sections here in this case though go ahead and click on add sections and from here we need to look for that recently uh, added section so in this case it's going to be video background so let's go ahead and select this one and from here as you can see we now added our video background in this case let's go ahead and uh, make it at the very top here and from here let's go ahead and select the video slide option and from here we need to paste the video link itself in this case what you need to do is you need to uh, basically save this one go back into your store again go to the section that says content go to files and upload the video that you want to uh, actually use in this case i actually uploaded a video here that i want to use so let's go ahead and click on the copy link here but if you haven't uploaded yours just click on upload files here and basically choose the video that you want to upload in this case let's go ahead and go back into our online store here click on the customize option from here let's go ahead and go back into the video background here go to slide here paste your link and once you paste that make sure to select it and once you've done that what we need to do is adjust anything that you want to edit here like for example add your heading add your description add your button label button links if you want to and a lot more if you want to add the uh, of overlay opacity here you can also do that so in this case uh that's about it so if you want to make further customization on it you can go ahead and do that and even uh add a cover image if the video doesn't load properly you can add it into this section here but in this case, that's about it. How to add visitor counter in Shopify. So you might be wondering, how do you actually add a visitor counter in Shopify? Well, in this case, it's kind of easy, but we won't be able to do it directly from Shopify. Now we'll be using another website for us to do this. In this case, we'll be using Elfside. In this case, let's go ahead and click on the sign up button at the top right screen here if you do not have your account. But since I already have my account, I could, I could just go ahead and click on log in. Now in the login page, I could choose my Google account or Facebook account or email here. In this case, I'm going to use Google and basically log in. Now, once you've done that, you should be able to see your dashboard here. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to add a new app. So at the bottom left here, let's go and click on add new app. And from here, we need to search for the visitor counter app. In this case, let's go and type in visitor here. 
And once you've typed that in, you can go ahead and click on visitor counter. Now, what we need to do next is we just need to start customizing our visitor counter. In this case, you could choose whatever template that you want to use here. So for example, I'll be using this template here. In this case, let's go, click, let's go ahead and click on continue with this template. And from here, you could go ahead and choose or change a few things here. Like for example, what to count, so unique visitors or each page views. They also have the number format here. In this case, you could choose comma, dot, space, or none. In this case, we'll be keeping this as comma. In this case, let's go ahead and click on the info section. Now, if you want to include information about today, yesterday, this week, you can go ahead and enable that as well. You also have the total starting value here if you want to start your uh, visitor count first or basically boost it up a bit. You also have the layout here if you want to change it. As you can see right now, we will be using the first one here. Now, if you want to add messages or even add or change your header here or even change the weekly stats graphs here if you want to uh, show them. In this case, if you want to change the style, you could change the color scheme, the size, and the border ranges here, and a lot more. But in this case, we are good with this one. Let's go and click on publish at the top right here. And from here, we'll need to choose a plan. Now, the great thing about website here is you could use it for free. So we'll be using the free version here. Let's go and click on select. Now, in this case, let's go and click on copy code. And let's go back into our Shopify store. In this case, go to Teams, click on customize. And under in here, what we need to do next is we need to add a section. In this case, we'll be adding a section here. Let's go and click on add section at the left panel. And from here, let's just type in custom and choose the option that says custom liquid. Now, once you've done that, as you can see, you now have an empty section. Now, at the top right here, go to liquid code, enter the link or the code that you copied before. And from here, let's go ahead and click on anywhere and just click on save. Now, typically it's going to reload itself so in this case, we, we just need to wait for it to load up properly. And as you can see right now, we now have a visitor counter. Now in this case, you could go ahead and just reposition it in whatever way that you want. And that's about it. How to add WhatsApp button in Shopify store. So first thing that we need to do here is we need to go to our Shopify admin. So go ahead and go to shopify.com and log in into your account. Now, once logged in, what we need to do next is we need to install an application. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to go to our settings at the bottom left here. And from here, go ahead and look for the apps section, apps and sales channel. Go ahead and click on it. Now from here, what we need to do is we need to click on the Shopify app store at the top right. And this should actually open up the Shopify app store. Now from here, what we need to do next is we need to look for an app that we could install for WhatsApp. So I would recommend you to type in the following, which is going to be what's app button. And from here, you could go ahead and click on WhatsApp button and search for it. Now, there's going to be a lot of applications that you could actually use here. So we have uh, the following applications. So in this case, go ahead and choose what is the best solo for you. Now, currently, we have WhatsApp button by ease here. So let's go ahead and click on it because it's currently built for Shopify. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and click on install. And once we hit on install, it should redirect you to another page wherein it's going to further ask you if you really want to install. So in this case, just click on install at the bottom right. And once you've done that, it should actually start the installation process. And once it's actually installed, it should redirect you back to your admin page here for Shopify. And you could change a few things. So you could also view some information about it, like the latest updates, the FAQs, and a lot more. In this case, let's go ahead and go to settings here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to basically get started. So first things first, we need to enter our phone number here. Now, once you've entered your mobile number here, you should be redirected back to the edit or web page editing here, which in this case, you need to enable WhatsApp chat. So in this case, let's go ahead and enable this one. And from here, what we need to do is just click on save at the top right. Now, as you can see now on our website at the bottom left, you have the chat with us notification or button for WhatsApp. Now, in this case, once we, once we go back into our Shopify store, click on the view or on eye icon here, it should show us our WhatsApp button. So in this case, let's just wait for it. As you can see, chat with us is now available. So once you click on it, it should actually open a WhatsApp and you, they should be able to contact you on your so WhatsApp account. Now, if you want to change a few things on your WhatsApp account, you could go ahead and go to settings again, go to apps and sales channel, and from here, you could go ahead and look for WhatsApp button here. Go ahead and click on that. And from here, you want to click on open app. 
Now, in this case, if you want to change a few things, like for example, the settings for it, the message, the appearance on it, you could basically change that. Also, if you want to upgrade your plan here, which if you get the pro plan here, you have the option to have the notification badge with custom account, custom CSS styling, Google Analytics tracking, and a lot more. How to change button size in Shopify. In this case, you might be wondering, how do you change your button size in Shopify? Well, in this case, it's actually pretty easy here. I'll be showing you the easiest way here. And if you want to change your code, I'll be showing you how to do that as well. So in this case, first things first, go to Shopify.com and you want to log in into your account. Now, in this case, for you to change or customize your button size, because by default, you won't have that option. All we need to do is we need to add a CSS section on our website. Now, in this case, I will be using the following uh, section, which in this case is going to be a style tag here. So just to give you some explanation here, what it actually does is uh, currently it is enclosed by a style tag here, which is being used, which is by default being used by or being called by CSS or cascading sheets. Now, in this case, uh, as you can see, it's now calling media. So it means that whenever your screen or someone's screen that is viewing the current website is in the following uh, pixel. So usually um, the common uh, screens right now is around uh, 1280 pixels. So it means that as long as the minimum uh, minimum screen size of the viewer is actually 1200 pixels, they will be showing the following uh, changes, which in this case, we are modifying the actual width of the button. Now, in this case, the button here is actually the default or the most frequent um, tabs or the most frequent uh, uh, classes. So in this case, the most frequent classes that are being used or are, be are used for your buttons, especially on the product page, which in this case, I'll be showing you later on. But in this case, later on, I'll be showing you how to find exactly the class if you want to change another button on a different page of yours. Now, in this case, the first thing that I could show you here is via the actual website itself. So in this case, let's go ahead and copy this section here. From here, you want to click on customize on your teams. And from here, we want to switch over to our product page here. Go to default product here. Now, what we need to do is we need to uh, basically look on the changes in one. So for example, I want to change this one. So there's actually two ways on this first way that I'm, I'm showing you right now. So it's first is via the team settings. Now, the team settings, you want to go to custom CSS and you just want to copy the uh, section that we just uh, just copied or I just shown you. So you can see the button itself uh, or the size of the button has now changed. Now, there are two formats that you could use here. You could use a percentage for the button or you could use pixels for this one. So since I indicated 50% here, it's going to reduce the button size by 50%. But if you use pixel here, so for example, I'm going to use maybe 400 first, and I want to indicate that it is pixels. Now it's going to update itself, and it's now in 400 pixels. Now in this case, if I want if I want to make this longer, let's go and choose 700, and it should update itself automatically. Now in this case, if you want to make this shorter, you could go ahead and make this like for some 100 pixel, and it will be a lot uh, smaller now. But yeah, so in this case, if you want to change that, you can go ahead and use the following code here. Now, another way for you to change your the size of your button here is in the other section. Because in, in the team settings, this actually applies the whole custom CSS on the whole um, team or in the whole web page that you have right now. What if you want, for example, you want to only change it on a specific section here. You don't want to affect other buttons that is already existing on your page. So in this case, you want to go to the content or the uh, content holder of your section here. Typically, it's going to be product information here if you're, if you're going to add this into your product page. But then again, if you're like, for example, you have a section for the products, make sure to, to select that uh, instead. Now, each section here has their own properties at the right side. So when you go to the very bottom, you have the same thing. You have custom CSS as well. 
So in this case, you want to paste the code or the script that I just uh, gave you. And from here, that should apply the same thing. But right now, it's only applying that on the, in that specific section. And other pages or other sections in your page here will not be affected. Now, in this case, this is the first method that you can add your uh, changes. Another thing or other way for you to actually uh, view or uh, make your changes is through your uh, web uh, website's uh, back end. But before that, uh, for you to actually see the actual tag or the class that is being used for that button, what you can do is you need to right click on this one or in any empty space that you see on your screen, you want to choose inspect. And by the way, I'm using Google Chrome for this one, but you can use any other uh, browser for this one, but it might be different or kind of different for you. So let's go and choose the selector here. I want to choose one of the buttons. So if it does, doesn't actually load up properly here, you could go ahead and uh, first select, select the section first, click on select here, click on this button. As you can see, we could basically see the actual product or the actual element or ID of that product. So you could go ahead and copy the ID itself if you want to. Now in this case, you can go to the right side here as well if you want to, as you can see this one. And uh, we should be able to, so this is the button here. So in this case, uh, this is the content for this one. Yeah, yeah, here. This is the content for this one, or in this case, you could copy the ID for it if you want to or even use the class product form here, which is make it bigger. So this one is going to be a product form, product form submit button. So in this case, you could either copy the class or ID. So if you want to make changes. Now, by the way, it's kind of different here. So in this case, when you go to your script here, so instead of using a dot, now in this case, instead of using dots, you need to use like, for example, for IDs, you need to use a pound sign and just add a product ID here. And that same thing, you should be able to apply your changes. But yeah, so with this, what is the other way that I'm talking about? So since we now know how to uh, get the ID or the class here. So let's go to our online store here, our admin page, go to teams as well. Click on the tree dot icon next to customize here and want to click on edit code. Now in here, what we need to do next is we need to go to the specific page they want to make the changes. Now, if you want to make the change to the whole website, we could go to the team.liquid section here. And in this case, uh, what we need to do is we need to add this. And so typically you could add this under the section for look for a tag, which in this case is going to be the uh, following, which is going to be uh, forward slash head. So you could go ahead and enter any of uh, the section here. Just paste the section that we just had right now. And that would actually apply the same thing. So in this case, you could go and click on save here. Now, once it's actually saved, we could go ahead and go back into our store, click on customize. And from here, when we actually view our product page, we should now have an updated version for it. So in this case, as you can see, it is now in this size. But yeah, so that's how you change the button size on your Shopify store. And that's about it. How to change buy now button color in Shopify. Change the buy now button color in your Shopify store. What we need to do is we need to access the following sections here. So I'll be showing you the easiest way here just to make sure that you are able to change it. In this case, go to your admin page, which is in this case going to be admin.shopify.com, log in and access your store. Now from here, let's go and click on customize. And from here, what we need to do next is we need to go to our product page. So at the top section, go ahead and click on the home page. You want to go to products and other products you want to go to default product. Now from here, as you can see, we have the buy now button. So what we need to do is we need to select a the specific section where the buy now button is going to be located. So typically, typically it's going to be the product information section here. Let's go ahead and click on it. Now at the right side, what we need to do is we need to scroll down a bit here until you see the section for custom CSS. Now from here, we need to indicate what we want to change. So 
for us to identify what we want to change here, which in this case is going to be the buy it now button here, let's go ahead and right click on the empty spaces we see here on our screen. So typically I want to go to the left side or in empty sides here, right click on it and you want to choose inspect. So by the way, if you're curious, I'm using Google Chrome here. It's just uh, so if you want to replicate it exactly what I'm doing right now. Now in this case at the top, right, go ahead and click on the selector tool here. And from here, we want to uh, basically hover over this section. Now, if you're unable to select it, make sure to select the buy buttons first. Go ahead and click on the selector again and choose the buy it now. Now, from here, once you've selected that, expand the inspector here. Scroll up and you want to hover on the specific element. So, for example, you have this button here. As you can see, it's being highlighted. So, it means that this is, this is the uh, button that I want to update. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to copy the actual um, button or the class for that button. So in this case, for this one, it is going to be the class Shopify payment button here. So in this case, you can go ahead and double click on the class section. Now, you just need to copy the first uh, section here, which in this case is going to be the class for it. So in this case, let's go ahead and right click on it, click on copy. And from here, we could go ahead and close this one and go back. Again, go, go ahead and collect, uh, select the product information section, which is in this case the container for our Buy It Now button. At the right side, you want to go to custom CSS and you want to type in the following. Now, since this is going to be a class uh, type of name for that tag, what we need to do is we just need to press dot and you want to paste what we just copied the name for that tag and we want to actually uh, specify some uh, cascading sheets uh, changes here. So in this case, uh, what, uh, what, like, what, what I said before, go ahead and type in dot, paste the name itself, and you want to add brackets to uh, enclose this. Now, in this case, what you need to indicate in uh, within it is going to be background and add a colon, and you want to indicate the color. So for example, I'm going to choose red, I want to end this with a semicolon, I want to copy the whole thing and I want to paste it under custom CSS. Now, once you've done that, once you click on the empty space here, as you can see, it now updates the actual color. Now, in this case, you could also use a hex color here if you want to. So I have this color picker open up here. So maybe I want to make it blue. Let's go ahead and make this blue. So maybe I want to use a large, uh, lighter color here, maybe this one. Let's go ahead and click on copy on the hex here. I want to go back here. And I want to actually paste this section here or the color. And once we actually go back in here, that should update itself. As you can see, by it now, it's color blue. Now, in this case, uh, that's about it. So the thing here is why we actually put it within product information because we only want to affect the actual button that is within by it now. So you'll notice that there is a, a theme settings here and under custom CSS in the section here. But this custom CSS at the left panel here actually applies on the whole website. So we only want to apply this on the specific section. So that's why we went to the product information page or section first and went to the CSS at the right side of the screen here. How to change buy now button text in Shopify. In this case, to change your buy now button on your shop, what we need to do first is we need to access our Shopify account. So go to shopify.com, log in into your account, and from here, we want to go to our team. Now in this case, under online store, go ahead and click on teams. And under teams, what we need to do is we need to go to our edit code section. So next to your customize, go ahead and click on the tree dot icon, and you want to go to the edit code option here. Now from here, what we need to do is we need to look for the main product that liquid file. So usually it should be in the left panel here, but I like to use the filter file section here. Just type in a product and from here, look for main product. So we have this one, let's go and open it up. Now, what we need to do next is we need to go to the very top here, click on any of the sections here and just press on control F on your keyboard. Now, just type in the following, which is going to be payment press and enter because we'll be looking for a specific section. So in this case, we'll be looking for the form payment terms here. Now, once you've had that, what we need to do is we now need to highlight it. So make sure you highlight the whole thing here. But once highlighted, we want to paste another code. 
So we'll be linking a code here under the description. So go ahead and check that out. This is the code that we need to do or copy. Let's go ahead and copy this one. Go ahead and go to our Shopify store again and paste it. But we are not yet done. We still have to change a few things here. So in this case, the thing that we need to change here is going to be the actual uh, option or the text for it. So in this case, uh, let's just copy it. So in this case, look for the button section here. So this is the one that we're looking for. So in this case, look for custom text here and you want to add your text. So for example, I wanna say this is going to be get it now. And from here, once you've done that, you can go and click on save at the top right. So now when we actually exit our site here and uh, we w when we actually visit the actual site here, you should be able to see the update. So let's just choose one of the products that we have right now. Let's go and choose this one. And from here, as you can see, it is now get it now instead of uh, buy it now. Uh, now in this case, that's about it. How to connect Shopify to TikTok. So you might be wondering, how do you connect your Shopify into TikTok? Because right now, expanding your business or the reach of your business to other platforms, especially TikTok, can be something really, really beneficial for your business. Now in this case, what we need to do first is go to the official website for Shopify here, which is Shopify.com, log in into your account, and go to your store. Now, just some information here, there's no direct way for you to connect your Shopify account into TikTok via the ordinary settings in your Shopify. So for us to connect our Shopify account into TikTok, we need to install a application or a third-party application for us to access those two platforms together. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to access our settings, which is located at the bottom left of your screen. And once you click on it, search for the option that says apps and sales channels. Now, from here, what we need to do is click on the button that says Shopify App Store. And once you click on it, you'll be able to see the app store for Shopify. Now, in this page, what you need to do is you just need to type in the following, which is going to be TikTok. Just press on enter. So sometimes you'll see it at the home page of C, you can go ahead and uh, click on it. But for now, as you can see, we have TikTok here. So let's go ahead and click on it. Now, just to make sure, we want to make sure that it is actually published or the developer itself is from TikTok Inc. So once you verify that, you can go ahead and click on install here. It's going to pop up another tab, which in this case, you'll be confirming your installation for TikTok here. So in this case, just click on install here. But I would suggest you to first read their privacy policy here so that you know what's going to uh, going to happen to your account. Just in case something went wrong, you know what are the things that you could do and not do within the application or the platform itself. Now from here, you'll be redirected to the next page on TikTok. Now, by the way, if you want to pin the specific application here, you can go ahead and click on the pin to your navigation here and it's going to be sticking around in this section here. Now from here, as you can see, this is the main page for TikTok here. So what we need to do is we need to set up. So to grow your business on TikTok, optimize market campaigns, create made sim creative made simple, and one click pixel installation. On this case, just click on the set up now and you'll be redirected to this page here. Now in this page, page here, what you need to do is you need to start creating or connecting your account. Now in this case, you need to have a TikTok account for business. Now in this case, for you to do that, just click on the connect button here and it's going to pop up another page, which in this case, you need to enter email and password or just click on log in with TikTok. Now in this case, once you've entered your email address and password, it should pop up this next page here, which in this case, just click on the connect option here, and that should actually connect your account. Now, in this case, it's going to reject you to another section again to TikTok Business Account Center. Now, in this case, it's going to ask you to allow Shopify to create an account here. So if you don't have an account here yet, you, go, you could go ahead and just click on create here. And it's going to start creating your account. As, as you can see, it's going to be automatic. And you have the TikTok Ads Manager. Now, you can access and manage your TikTok ads here. So we want to basically create a new ads manager here. Just click on Create and fill out all the necessary details here. So that includes the business name, time zone here, your email, your phone number as well, and the country or the industry here. Now, in this case, just click uh, fill out all the details here and just click on Sign Up and Connect.
Now once you hit on sign up and connect that should create your TikTok ads manager. Now here you have the data sharing section. Now in this case, I choose the appropriate one here. So currently the us uh, are selected and the recommended level here is going to be maximum but in this case you could choose the appropriate one here if you want to as you can see the description here actually changes but for now we're going to use maximum here and from here we want to click on confirm now in this case it should actually load up properly here and as you can see we now have the company information so we need to set up our company so in this case, just click on set up and just provide the necessary details here. So that includes the state, the province, the street address, the postal code, and are you an ad agency and the payment section here as well. So let's just fill out all the details. Now in this page here, what we need to do is just click on finish setup and that should actually set up our store and connect our Shopify account into TikTok. Now in this UI here, you could go ahead and view all details about your account. So we have the manager TikTok features, product status on TikTok, and some guidelines and some articles that you could read without uh, regarding TikTok manager here. Now in this case, you also have your settings here if you want to change a few things like marketing, ads manager account, payment method, product catalog, your data sharing, and your account here. Now also you have the help center here if you need further assistance. And that's about it. So connecting your account in TikTok in Shopify is actually pretty easy. You just need to follow the steps and you should be good. And that's about it. How to connect Shopify to Facebook. So the first thing that we need to do here is we first have to ensure that we have set up our Shopify account or our store. So in this case, I'm already logged in into my account and as you can see, I've already set up my store. But if you haven't set up your store yet, make sure to create an account and set up your store here. Now, another requirement that we'll need for this tutorial is we need to have a Facebook page. Now, to do that, you just need to log in into facebook.com into your account. And usually at the bottom left here, you should see a pages option. So go ahead and just click on it. And from here, just click on create new page and just enter all the necessary details. So that includes the page name, the category, and the bio for that specific page. Now, once you've done that, the next thing that you want to do here is you have to ensure that you can actually access Meta Business Suite. Now in this case, usually when you actually switch over to a page that you've created, you should be able to see this section here. So at the top right, you should be able to see your profile. So in this case, just switch over to your Facebook page here. And once you've done that, you should be able to see this section here. As you can see, the UI itself is going to be something different, but usually at the top left here, you should see the Meta Business Suite. So just make sure that you're able to access this section here. But once you've done that, we are now ready to start connecting our accounts. Again, you need to, to have the following requirements. That includes a Shopify account, a Shopify store, a Facebook account, as well as a Facebook page that, you, you, that you'll be using for promoting your shop. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we just need to go back into Shopify and we are now ready to connect our accounts. Now, what we need to do is we need to install an app that is for Shopify and for Facebook itself. So at the bottom left here, go to settings. And from here, go to the section here that says apps and sales channel. And from here, go to the Shopify app store at the top right. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and look for Facebook here. So let's go to the search section. Just type in Facebook, press on enter and you should be able to see different applications related to Facebook. Now look for the section here that says Facebook and Instagram. Go ahead and click on it. And from here, just install it into your account. So in this case, I'm going to uninstall this first so that I'll be, it will be able to show you the whole thing here. So let me just uninstall it fully and just click on uninstall. And from here, once you've done that, let's just go back in here, reload Facebook and Instagram. And from here, it should actually reload itself as a application that I've, I will be installing. So let's just wait for it. Now, this is the next page when you actually click on the install button, usually able to see this section here. Go ahead and click on install for you to successfully install Facebook and Instagram here. So in this case, let's just wait for it. But once it's actually installed, you should be able to see the UI for Facebook and Instagram. Now, also, if you want to pin your applications here, just click on the pin option here or icon and you should be able to pin it into your account here. 
Now in this case, what we need to do next is we just need to start connecting our account. So click on the get started button here. And from here, just follow the steps for you to set up your account. So first thing that we have to do here is we have to connect our accounts here. So you need to connect your Facebook account here. Just click on connect account. It should pop up a new UI. So if you already log in into your Facebook and this browser here, you should be able to see your account here. But if not, you need to enter your credentials. But for now, let's just click on continue since I'm already logged in. And from here, just click on confirm account. Now from here, just click on allow. And that should actually allow Shopify to access our Facebook account. Now, as you can see in the next section, this is going to be the business assets. Now we need to use a business asset. So that's why I actually uh, ask you to connect or create your Facebook page here. But in this case, if you don't have a Facebook page yet, you could, you could go and click on the create new button here. And from here, it's going to ask you to basically create a Facebook page. In this case, just click on go to Facebook and fill out and follow the steps for you to basically create your page here. But in this case, going back, make sure that you click on your shop here and click on connect. Now from here, it's going to ask you to connect a business account. So if you have, if you don't have a business account yet, click on the create new here and just follow the steps for you to create your new business account. Now for now, let's just click on select here for my existing business account and just click on connect. Now from here, it's going to start the connection process for that. It's going to ask you some information for this. So first is you need to choose your preference. So preference here is depending on what you select, it's going to give you uh, some of the features here. Like for example, for conservative here, it's going to use Metapixels, which is third party cookie. And if you want to view more details on it, you could go ahead and do that. But I would suggest you to try using Enhance here because it actually enhances your uh, sharing a preference here. So this is going to be the basic one but yeah so depending on what you need here so for now i'm going to use the enhance here and from here let's just click on the save option it's going to start saving our uh, option here or our details and once you've done that you need to uh, basically create a metapixel now, Metapixels is a way for you to keep track of your customer's behavior. So let's just click on create new here. And as you can see, we were able to easily correct, uh, create our pixel. So once you've done that, just click on confirm. And from here, you should be able to see the Meta's seller agreement and Meta business tools and terms. So in this case, I would recommend you to read through their agreement and tools terms here just to make sure that you know what you're getting into as well as if some things go wrong, you should be able to protect yourself. So for now, let's just select this one and just click on submit for review. And from here, it should uh, basically uh, redirect you to another page where in this case, it's going to say finalizing channel setup. So in this case, let's just wait for it to complete. Now from here, you should see or you should get the you're ready to start selling on Facebook sales channel. Now from here, you could go and click on done. And from here, since we have successfully connected our account, we are now ready to start creating our ads. So if you want to create your ad, just click on create ad here and it should actually load up another tab, which in this case, you should be able to see the ads manager. Now in this case, you can go ahead and click on get started since we've just successfully connected our Shopify account with our Facebook account. And that's about it how to install Facebook Pixel on Shopify. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install Facebook and Instagram app on Shopify. So at the bottom left of your screen, go ahead and click on settings. And under settings, you need to access the apps and sales channel option. Now from here, click on Shopify app store and under Shopify app store, you need to look for Facebook and Instagram. So go to the search bar here, just type in Facebook, press and enter. And from here, you should be able to see the application that we are talking about, which is Facebook and Instagram. So let's go ahead and click on it. Now from here, you just need to click on the uh, option to install it. So in this case, since I'm already installed it, just click on open app. Now, if this is the first time that you're using this app here, what you need to do is you just need to click on the install button at the bottom right of your screen. And from here, it should actually install the Facebook and Instagram app into your store. And once it's actually installed, you need to perform some steps for you to complete setting up your Facebook pixel into Shopify. In this case, you could go ahead and click on the get started button here just under the connect your Shopify store to Facebook and Instagram. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on set up. And from here, we need to connect our Facebook account. Let's go ahead and click on connect account. And from here, we need, to use, we need to choose our account. So I want to use this one. Click on confirm account. And from here, allow Facebook to share business assets with Shopify. So that includes your pixel. So let's go ahead and click on allow. And once you click on the allow button here, it's going to say the business assets that we currently have. 
In this case, you could go ahead and choose the business assets that I have right now. So maybe I want to use my Facebook page here. So by the way, you need to have your Facebook account in a business. So you need to convert your uh, Facebook account into business. So it's actually pretty easy. You just need to go to your settings and the uh, switch account options. You should be able to see it and switch it to business. Now in this case, once you've done that, you should be able to see your business assets here. So again, I'm going to choose my Facebook account here or my Facebook page here and just click on connect. And once you've done that, it's going to ask you how you manage your Facebook, Instagram data sharing preferences. Now you have the conservative here, we have the enhanced and the maximum here. So in this case, I would suggest you to use the enhanced version here. It has MetaPixel. So customer activity data is shared using the MetaPixel, advanced matching, and conversion API. Now, if you want to view uh, further details on it, like page product reviews, uh, views, item added or removed from cart, search terms, and a lot more. So for now, we are going to click on save here. And once you've done that, you should be able to see this following option here. Now from here, you need to connect your Pixel into your uh, Shopify account. In this case, you could go ahead and choose the uh, Pixel that you want to use. So for example, I already have this sample data uh, set uh, Pixel I just recently created. As you can see, this is my Pixel here. So in this case, you could go ahead and click on the connect button here. But if you want to create a new one, you could go ahead and click on the create new button here. But for now, I'm going to use this one. Let's go ahead and click, click on the connect button. And once you've done that, we just need to agree to Meta's seller agreement and click on submit for review. And once you've done that, it should redirect you to the overview page here, which in this case, you have the product status, finalizing channel setup here, and shop and on Facebook. So this might take a few seconds or a few minutes depending on your account. But in this case, once it's actually completed, you should be able to start using Facebook and Instagram on your Shopify store or if you've just connected your Facebook account into your Shopify store. Now, it's when it's actually completed or once the uh, setup is complete, you should see this pop up here. You're ready to start selling on Facebook sales channel. In this case, you could go ahead and click on done at the bottom right. And as you can see, we now have our accounts connected. If you want to view your settings, you could go ahead and click on settings here. Uh, see uh, the current uh, behaviors, the uh, data set or the pixel that is connected, the delivery settings here, the sales channel that is actually connected. And if you want to actually deactivate the shop, go ahead and click on the activate shop. Now, if you want to connect additional Facebook pages, you can go and click on connect here. Just follow the steps again, like what we saw before. Now, if you want to share, uh, change your data share here, uh, you can go and click on change here. And yeah, so once you go to overview here, again, you should be able to see this uh, UI here. Like for example, some products have issues or your check shop e info here, create shop. So if you have any issues here, just click on review issues here for you to fix that. And yeah, so... Yeah, so that's how you install your Facebook Pixel into Shopify. Now, if you want to test using your Pixel here, you need to go to the following web page. It's going to be business.facebook.com slash settings slash uh, event dataset news. In this case, you should be able to see your datasets here. Make sure you select your Pixel that you have right now and click on the open in events ma uh, manager. Now in this case, you need to go to the test event section and from here, you should be able to see the confirm your website events are set up correctly. Now you just need to enter your website URL here and from then, once you've entered your website URL, so let me just go back here real quickly and open up our store here. From here, let's go ahead and copy this one and from here, we just need to actually paste it in our events manager here. So you can see page view, custom event that actually happened right now. So in this case, uh, that's how you actually uh, view or test it. But uh, yeah, so if you don't see this UI here, you can just basically manually paste your uh, URL here. As you can see, we have page view custom event here. So maybe I want to go back into my shop here. Maybe I want to go to my catalog and maybe add something into my cart. So I want to choose this one and let's go ahead and add one product. Click on add to cart. And once you've done that, we could go and click on view cart. Now in this case, that should reflect in your pixel. As you can see right now, we have a subscribe button click, add to cart, and page view, view content, and a lot more. Now if you see the following options and even the event ID here, uh, partner integrations, we have the setup meta here. But yeah, so, so as long as the steps or the things that you did here on your Shopify store is actually reflecting on your pixel here, you are now ready to go. And that's about it how to connect Shopify to Amazon. But before we start, hurry up and check out our latest software just under this video. So let's get started. So in this case, how do we connect our Shopify, Shopify account into Amazon, which in this case is actually pretty easy, but kind of tricky, but 
let's go ahead and do that so first thing we need to do here is we first have to set up our shopify account and our store so it is recommended that you have your store first before proceeding with the next steps now in this case as you can see i've already created my account and set up my store now in this case what we need to do next is we have to ensure that we have an amazon associates account now in this case go ahead and sign up into amazon associates so you just need to provide some information about yourself and some information about your business and your website now in this case once you've done that you should be able to see this ui here once you log in now in this case what we need to do next is we need to go back into our shopify account and from here we need to add an app so to do that, we need to go to the settings at the bottom left. And from here, we need to go to apps and sales channel. Now at the top right, go ahead and click on Shopify app store to open up the app store for Shopify. And from here, you just need to type in the following, which is going to be Amazon and just press and enter on your keyboard. Now, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of choices that you could choose from. Now, in this case, we'll be using the Amazon Importer Spreader app here. But in this case, if you want to use a different app, you could go ahead and do that. But for now, just to give you an example, I'm going to use Amazon Importer Spreader here. Now, as you can see, it is going to be a $5 per month um, subscription, but you could try their services for seven days, which actually is a free trial. Now in this case, just click on install here. So it's going to load up another tab, which in this case is going to ask you if you really want to install this app into your store. So for now, let's just click on install here. And from here, it's going to start the installation process. So let's just wait for it to install. Now from here, what we need to do is just click on the approve button here. Since this is going to be a five uh, US dollar subscription, also it's going to have a seven, free, uh, seven day free trial. But for now, let's just click on approve here. And from here, we should be able to see the next UI. Now, in this case, this is going to be the UI for spreader.co. So it's going to give us three, this steps here for us to connect our account. So first thing we need to do here is we need to integrate code. So we need to add two lines of integration code in our Shopify store. So you can go ahead and click on integration guide here and you should be able to see some information on how to do that. So for example, you need to go to your teams and you need to go to the section here that says actions and going to uh, your edit code section. Now from here, it's going to say sections here, product template, that liquid. So you need to go to do that. And from here, what we need to do is we just need to follow the all the steps that you'll be seeing here. Now, in this case, if you're not familiar with adjusting your page or your store's code here, as you can see right now, this might be kind of overwhelming. As you can see, there's going to be a lot of files that you, could, you should be accessing here. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to raise a ticket here for us to success successfully do this. So, in this case, we need to include our email, the subject, description, and as well, attaching a file here and just click on submit. Now, in this case, we need to ask for uh, help here if you're not familiar with integrating code into your shop or in Shopify. In this case, the next step that we need to do is we need to join Amazon Association Program. So in this case, you need to include or save your affiliate ID in the dashboard settings. So go to the settings link here. And from here, you just need to get your associates or affiliate ID. Now, usually when you go to Amazon Associates, at the top right next to the store section here, it is going to be your associates ID. So in this case, let's go ahead and just copy this one. And from here, we need to go ahead and just enter our affiliate ID. And from here, click on save. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and go back to the dashboard home here. And as you can see, it is now safe. Now from here, what we need to do next is we just need to import our products. So in this case, you need to go to Amazon, copy the link or product page link. And from here, just click on the add product. So let's just go ahead and go to Amazon and copy our product link. So for example, this is our product. This is only an example, but make sure that you have the product here or your product here. In this case, let's go ahead and add our Amazon product link here. Click on add product. And from here, it's going to transfer the Amazon uh, details into our Shopify page. So let's just let's go ahead and just wait for it. And uh, just basically wait for the connection to complete. Now, for you can see, it's going to say product added successfully. Click on close. Now, in this page here, what are the other things that you could do here? 
well you could actually edit your product here so in this case just click on the edit option here and from here you should be able to see the products page here which in this case you can change some details for it like for example the title the description and some pictures if you want to as well like for example if you want to change some features on it like for example uh, if the feature or the description is incorrect you could go ahead and change that even add colors here if you want to now from here you could go ahead and adjust the pricing compare a price the costs the inventory here, the barcode if needed. And from here, you also have the uh, option to add the weight for it. Now in this case, since we actually link our Amazon here into our store, you should be able to get all the details here correctly. But if you want to add it to your collection, you could go ahead and do that and add, even add tags if you want to. Now in this case, you could go ahead and just click on save here at the bottom right. And from here, you should be good. Now going back into our spreader dashboard here because uh, in this case we need to sometimes click on the sync button here because we all know some of the products that is listed in Amazon would be sometimes going to be updated. So clicking on the sync button here and syncing your products is a great way for you to make sure that you have the latest update on it. Now also it's going to give you this notification here. So this will imp import the most recent product data from Amazon to offer existing data from this product on Shopify. Now in this case, if you're sure, just click on the sync now and from here, you should be able to sync it. But currently, manual sync is available in golds or plants above. So you need to upgrade, upgrade your plan here to be able to use it. In this case, there are going to be some other things that you do here. Like for example, you could go to your settings and change some details about your account. So that includes default values, buttons, markup pricing, auto sync, a super deal localized analytics and a lot more. Now also you have your account here. So if you want to view your name, email, website, and plan as well. So you also have the, the watch list, smart product description, pro book, price editor, and connector. So those are the other apps that they actually have as well. Now you also have the tool section here, which in this case, you should be able to use their bulk import extensions, exit pop up, and a lot more. But yeah, so that's about it. So it's actually pretty simple with connecting your Amazon, Amazon and Shopify account here. So by the way, I would actually recommend you to make sure that you integrate the uh, section or the code here from Spreader because this, uh, this integration button or this integration link would actually add a button on your product page. So just to give you an overview, this is going to what's going to look like. So at the very bottom of this article, you see the view on Amazon button here. So if they want to view this on Amazon, they should be able to uh, click on it and view that original product where it actually came from. But in this case, it's actually pretty simple, but kind of complicated with the code section here. But you could just raise a ticket for them to integrate that specific code into your website, which is uh, pretty easy. And that's about it. How to integrate people checkout in Shopify. So how do we integrate sh uh, ch people into Shopify? So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to log in into our Shopify account. So go to Shopify.com, log in into your account, and open up the store that you want to customize. Now from here, what we need to do next is we need to access our settings. So settings is going to be located at the bottom left here. Let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, we need to go to the payment section at the left panel here. Now once you click on it, you should be able to see your payment section. Now, by default, you should be able to see people under additional payment methods. Now, in this case, by default, again, your email address that you use to create your Shopify account will be used as a means of setting up your PayPal account here. So typically, it's going to say finish setting up or for some users, they will see the activate people here. Now, in this case, this, this is the first time that you're accessing people. Again, it's going to say you finish setting up at the bottom right here. But if this is the, uh, if you're accessing it or you only see the activate button here, you can just basically click on activate. Now, it's going to actually request some information regarding your account. So that includes connect a people account to start accepting payments on Shopify. The first is you need to basically determine the country or region of your people account as well as the email itself. So in this case, let's go and fill that up. Now, there are going to be two outcomes here. So if your email address that you use to uh, basically connect your people account 
and to Shopify does not have any business accounts and people, then it will automatically redirect you to another page where in this case, you need to create your PayPal account or PayPal business account for you in order for you to proceed. But if you already have a PayPal business account, it's going to redirect you to the login page here, as you can see on my screen. Now in this case, let's go ahead and enter our password and just click on lock in. Now in this case, once you're logged in, it's going to say, thanks for signing up. Now it's going to say you are now, or you now have an account and you've successfully integrated people with Shopify. Now in this case, you might also need to confirm your email. So in this case, they will be sending you an email, which in this case, you just need to follow for you to actually confirm your account. But in this case, let's go and click on go back to Shopify. Now it, read, it will actually reject you to Shopify here. Let's just wait for it to load up. But once it actually loads up, you should be able to see additional payment methods here and go to the section here. As you can see, our PayPal account is already connected here and PayPal Express checkout is now active. Now in this case, that's about it. How to set up Klarna on Shopify. So you might be wondering, how do you actually set up Klarna to accept payments on Klarna on your Shopify shop. Well, this one is kind of tricky, but it's actually pretty simple. So before we actually show you the way on adding Klarna into your shop, we first have to determine if you're eligible. Now we all know when you're actually setting up your shop, it's going to ask you where do you want to locate or basically, uh, uh, determine or uh, specify where your shop is going to be located. So maybe on Australia or in Singapore and any other location there, you just need to choose where your shop is located. But in some cases, Klarna or a Klarna itself is not supported on all countries. Now, depending on where your uh, current shop is uh, set to, like for example, I have my shop here set to Australia, it means that Klarna accepts or supports my store. Now to check that, you could go to their official website, which is Klarna.com. They have a website or a specific page for this one. So for Klarna payments methods, they actually accept it or they are available in the following countries. So it is within Norway, Finland, Denmark, and all more countries and that includes USA and Australia. But in this case, we first have to determine if we are eligible. So if you're one or if your shop is located in the following countries, then most likely Klarna should be available to you. Now, in this case, if your shop or your shop here does not is not located on the following locations, when we actually search for the apps uh, later on, I'll be showing you how it's going to look like. Now, let's say how do we actually start installing Klarna and using Klarna in a Shopify shop? Uh, what we need to do here is we need to go to our settings at the bottom left and from here you need to go to the payment section here and what we need to do is we need to add a payment method that uh, for our shop now to do that what we need to do is just scroll down a bit here go to additional payment methods click on add payment method here and what we need to do is we need to search for Klarna so in this case, this might load quite slow. So it depends on the current server of Shopify right now. So in this case, I want to use the search by payment method here and I want to search for Klarna I just press on enter. And from here, let's just wait for the search to appear here. So Klarna should actually appear here. So if it appears, if it actually appears on the search section here, go ahead and click on it. It's going to add it into your uh, search bar here, which in this case, you should be able to see different providers that actually supports Klarna. So they have Klarna themselves in here, but they also have a ping pong checkout, Asibo local payments, Air Wallex, and a lot more. So this uh, payment providers actually gives you the meta to add Klarna. But if you want to use like, for example, ping pong checkout here, you'll be able to use Visa, MasterCard, in AMX here or American Express for your payment methods. But in this case, just to give you an example, we're going to use Klarna here. Just go ahead and click on it. And from here, it should actually redirect us to the section for installing uh, Klarna here. So in this case, uh, you should be able to uh, click on this one. So let me just uninstall this one. So I'll be showing you the full process here. So here, going back, this is the page where in this case, we'll need to install Klarna. So let's go ahead and click on install here to fully install Klarna. And it should open up a new tab, which in this case, it will show the official app for Klarna on the uh, app store for Shopify. So in this case, let's just wait for it to pop up here and load up. Now in here, what we need to do is just click on the install button here to fully install that. And from here, it's going to load up the installation here. So let's just wait for it to load up. 
Now in this case, once Klarna is now installed into your store, you should be able to see the next page here, which in this case, you need to log in into your Klarna account. Now if you don't have a Klarna account yet, I would suggest you to click on the get started button at the bottom right here, and you should be able to see the Klarna merchant portal here, which in this case, you need to fill out all the necessary details here to apply for an account. So that includes the basic information, so e-commerce, the country of registration, your business details, your stakeholders, and your bank accounts. Now, in this case, you just need to complete the form here to fully complete your application here in Klarna, and you'll be able to connect your account here on your Shopify store. How to add Pioneer to Shopify. So you might be wondering, how do you actually add a Pioneer to your Shopify account here or in your Shopify store? So there's going to be a few requirements here. Like for example, you need to have a Shopify account as well as a store that you've created via Shopify. Now in this case, once you have those set up, you're now ready to connect your Pioneer account or add your Pioneer account into Shopify. So what we need to do first is we need to access our settings. So at the bottom left of your screen, go ahead and click on settings here. And from here, what we need to do is we need to go to the option that says payments. Now, if you're not aware yet, payments is a location where you could actually add different kind of payment methods. So I, as you can see, we also have PayPal here. So if you choose to activate your PayPal here, you'll be able to receive or basically uh let your customers use their PayPal accounts to pay for the products or services that you offer on your website. Now, in this case, for us to add Pioneer is we need to go to the additional payment method section and click on the add payment method option or button. Now, from here, what we need to do is we need to search for Pioneer. Now, you might be wondering, yeah, I already did that. I, did that. I searched Pioneer here via the search by payment method. But the cool thing about um, Shopify here is you could choose the search by provider here. And from here, it's going to search by provider. Now, meaning whenever you type in Pioneer here, you'll be able to see it. As you can see, we have Pioneer checkout here. In this case, let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, it actually offers a 2% per transaction fee. Like meaning uh, whenever someone actually uses Pioneer checkout on your website, it's going to be 2% uh, fee on it. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on the Pioneer checkout here. And what we need to do next is we need to install the official application for Pioneer. Now to do that, just click on the install button at the top right of your screen and should open up a new tab here, which in this case is going to open up the Shopify app store or the installation page for Pioneer. Now in this case, we just wait for it to pop up and here just confirm that you want to install it. Just click on the install button at the bottom right. And from here, it's going to initiate the process of installing Pioneer checkout into your Shopify account. Now in this case, all you need to do is you just need to wait for it to finish. But once it actually finished, you should be able to see this next window here. Now in this case, the next thing it's going to say is finish setting up your account with this provider to start accepting payments. Now in this case, for you to properly use Pioneer Checkout here, you need to manage your account or connect your account. Now to do that, just click on the manage account option. And from here, it's going to open up a new tab, which in this case, it will actually redirect you to the next page, which is on the Pioneer official website. Now in this case, what we need to do here is we need to sign in or we need to register via Pioneer here now if you already have your account you could go and choose sign in here but if you don't have your account yet you could go ahead and click on register here and from here you just need to provide some information about yourself so that includes like uh for your first name last name email address phone number and your business details here as well so they might ask you some ids or verifications or any documents verifying your identity just to make sure that you're a real person now, in this case, uh, once you've done that, once you've logged in into your account, you just need to follow the steps for you to connect your account. Again, if you are un unable to see the window again, like for example, you've already created your account, but you're lost throughout the process, well, you could visit again the settings section. So let's go and go, go ahead and go to the bottom left here. And from here, let's go to payments again. And from here, what we need to do next is we need to click on the app payment method again. And from here, go to search by provider. Just type in Pioneer here. And from here, let's go ahead and click on it. Click on it again. And again, you could go ahead and click on manage account. And again, you could go ahead and sign in or into your account. In this case, just follow these steps for you to successfully connect your account. Now, in this case, 
that's about it how to add subscriptions on your Shopify store so in this case what we need to do first is we need to access our Shopify store so go to shopify.com log in into your account and access your store now in this case I am in my home page here so what we need to do is we need to basically view our store or we need to view our product section here so at the left side you should see an option for a product so go ahead and click on it and from here we have the option for collection inventory purchase orders transfers and gift cards so in other products you should be able to see your products so first things first is we first need to know if it's actually possible for us to basically add subscriptions via the vanilla version here or the default way in uh, Shopify. So in this case, when we click on add product here or open up any product that we have right now, like for example, we have this shirt here. So typically we don't have the option to add those subscriptions. That like for example, you want to add a, subscri a subscription on a specific shirt or a sticker or any of the services that you have right now uh, that is uh, posted in Shopify. So sometimes yeah, you might want to add those. But in this case, by the default uh, usage of Shopify here, you don't have those options, which is kind of annoying because uh, right now, uh, it's uh, if they actually add this functionality here on Shopify, it's going to be something that's going to be really helpful for you. But the good thing about here and Shopify is you could actually install different applications for any services or any uh, things that you want to add or different uh, for yourself functionalities that you want to add into your Shopify account. Now, in this case, the first thing we want to do is we want to ensure a few things on our account. Like for example, we want to go to settings at the bottom left here. And first is we want to basically add our payment methods. So in this case, we want to go to payments here. And from here, since we are just uh, uh, testing it, you could go ahead and click on see all providers here. And you could use the uh, bogus gateway here just to test things on your website here. So in this case, go ahead and choose or uh, just follow the steps for you to activate the bogus gateway here for testing. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on reactivate. And once we've done that, we could go ahead and uh, install the applications that we want to add in here. So at the uh, setting page again, we want to go ahead and go to apps and sales channel here. And from here, we want to click on the Shopify app store, which is located at the top right of your screen. Now, and here it's going to open up another tab wherein we should be able to see the app store for Shopify. Now, in this case, uh, since we want to add a subscription, we want to enter the following keywords here, which is subscription itself. So go ahead and search for it. And as you can see, there's going to be a lot of subscription uh, based applications that you could basically install into your account. Now, I do have to warn you, some of the applications here costs or may incur additional costs into uh, your account. Like, for example, it's, if, it just, if it just says free to install, it means that the application itself is free to install, but there might be some additional um, fees that is included on the app itself. So, yeah, it's free to install, but there are going to be paid services within the app itself. So for in order for you to uh, fully use fully use it. But if you see the option here that says free plan available, it means that the application itself actually offers free plan. So in this case, you'll be able to use the application itself for free, but with limitations. So if you want to use further like further features on that application, you need to uh, buy their subscription. But in this case, just choose whatever um, application you want to use here. But in this case, we'll be using the absolute subscription app here. So let's go ahead and click on it. Now it's going to lead us into the product page or, or the app page here. So go ahead and click on install here. And from here, what we need to do is just confirm that we want to install the app itself. So typically, it's going to give you redirect you back into the admin page. Just click on install app to confirm. And once you've done that, it's going to reload itself. So let's just wait for it to reload. Now, once it reloads itself, you should be able to see the absolute subscription app itself. So in this case, the first thing that we need to do here in the subscription app is we need to set up our subscription. 
So in this case, it's going to give us three options here. So we have the migrate existing subscriptions over upsell subscriptions. So if you've previously used different application that has subscription based, well, you could chat with them regarding the migration if you want that. And you also have the option here to skip onboarding and directly jumping into the app dashboard itself. So regardless of what you click here at the left side, you won't be able to go there unless you choose one of the options here. But in this case, I would suggest you to follow the onboarding process here because it's going to give you the whole lot that you need for you to set up the subscription for your website. So in this case, let's just click on next step. And from here, it's going to basically uh, help us create our subscription plan. Now here we have the option to add a name on our subscription. And we also have the uh, option to select our products. Now in this case, maybe you want to say, uh, say we want to select a product here or collection. So maybe we want to add a shirt here and maybe we want to add a black shirt shirt here and just click on add. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and add other projects as well if you want to add more. But in this case, we have the subscription frequency as well. Now from the name itself, you should be able to basically add or edit your subscription fre frequency. Now here we have three options for other order billing type. So you have pay as you go, prepaid one time, and prepaid auto renew. Now in this case, if you want to basically a, a use the prepaid, which is a one-time payment here, we also have the prepaid here, which is actually a auto renew, and the pay as you go, so auto renew here. So in here we have the order frequency name here, so which is the name of the order we uh, frequency. So make sure that you actually describe it properly here, so you won't get confused. Now here we ha also have the order frequency description, which is just a description, and we also have the order frequency here as well. Now, in this case, uh, we want to make sure that it actually matches on our order frequency name here. So if it just says a weekly subscription here, make sure that you change this to weekly. So we have four options, day, week, month, year. So depending on what you set here, so maybe you want to say this, this is for every week. And the frequency is every one week. Now from here, we have the subscription and your will day. So the same day, the week as when the initial order was made. Or if you want to change this to a different date, you could go ahead, like for example, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Now from here, you could go ahead and click on apply discount if you want to apply discounts on this one. But uh, for now, we want to disable that. But in this case, we want to go ahead and click on add frequency plan here. And we, here we have the two week subscription if you want to add those as well. But in this case, it's, we let's go ahead and click on delete here. And once we've added all the details, just click on the next button at the top right off your screen. Now, once you've done that, it's going to reload our UI here. So let's just wait for it. Now, in the next page, it's going to give us instructions on how to actually enable the Absol subscription app on our Shopify store. Now, in this case, I'm going to give you an overview here, which is this one is actually free, uh, pretty fast. It's not something really hard. Just click on the go to Shopify section here. It's going to reload a tab wherein it's going to reload the editor for your website. So in this case, it's going to immediately open up the app section for our app embeds. So make sure that you actually enable the Absol subscription here. Just enable that. Click on save at the top right. And once you've done that, you could go back into here and from here, just click on start selling. Now, once you've done that, it should uh, actually uh, give you an option to actually uh, add. Like for example, if you want to use the starter business or business premium here. So depending on what plan you actually use for Absol here, you have different perks. Like for example, since we're just using the free here, there's, there's are the few things that we could do here, like subscriber, customer portal, and a lot more. So up to six here. But you use the starter here, you have the additional features for powered uh, password list login, subscriber loyalty features, and manual subscription creations. So again, depending on what you choose here, you have different perks and features that you can access in here. Now at the left side here, if you click on the option for uh, analytics subscription, you should be able to see those details. So for now, let's just go back to in the left side here. And so by the way, if you're on unable to uh, basically view the other or the next UI here, so uh, you could go and click on select here on free so that uh, you'll be able to use the free plan. And in this case, once you've selected that, you should be able to see or access the other features here for Absolute. 
So let's just wait for it to load up. And once it loads up, you should be able to see the uh, main UI for it. So this is the uh, dashboard here. So you have the chat with us if you want to uh, ask about uh, Absol subscription or get in touch with their uh, customer support. I also have the uh, option, which is the uh, upgrade plan here if you want to upgrade that and other options here as well. Now they also offer tutorials here because obviously there's going to be a lot of things that you can do here in Absol. So if you want to read those articles, tutorial videos, and any of the advanced features that they offer, you can go ahead and do that as well. Now they also offer uh, recommended apps that you could use uh, that is uh, that you, you could actually integrate with Absol uh, along or alongside Absol here. Now on the left side, let's go to analytics here. So from the name itself, you should be able to see your analytics. And here we have subscriptions. So in this case, this is where subscriptions are going to be uh, present. So if you want to add a new subscription, just click on create subscription here. And from here, you should be able to uh, basically uh, add your subscriptions. Now here in the customer section, you should be able to uh, basically uh, view your customers that actually avails your uh, subscriptions. You have the subscription plans here if you want to add subscription plans. So in this case, just click on a create subscription plan here, or if you want to export it, you can go ahead and do that as well. Now in this case, in this UI, you should be able to see or add the names or whatever details they want here. So for now, let's just click on save here. But if you also want to add products, you can go ahead and do that as well. So let's go ahead and select a, a very uh, single product here. Just to give you an example. And here, just click on add and just click on save again. And as you can see, we were able to add that specific subscription into our account. Now we also have these settings here. So if you want to change the general settings, widget settings, customer report settings, email settings, subscription, uh, subscriber acquisition settings, and automation settings as well, if you want to add those. Now, the last thing that we need to do here is we need to add our widget for the application itself. Now, for you to do that, you need to go to online store. And from here, we want to go to the section that says customize. So it's going to reload your page here, wherein you'll be able to customize your site. In this case, instead of homepage here, we want to go to our product section and we want to go to default product. Now in here, what we need to do is we need to add our widget. So typically you can go ahead and just click on add section here. So just to give you an example, I'm going to delete my widget here. So let's just delete this widget here. Now from here, we want to add a section and we, we want to go to apps here and we want to add a subscription widget here. So let's just click on it. And once you've done that, just hit on save at the top right. And we want to exit our editor here. Now, next thing we want to visit our online store here. And we want to visit the product that we set the subscription plan for. Now, in this case, since we set this for shirt, let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, when you actually scroll down a bit, you should be able to see the option here for purchase options. So in this case, you'll be able to use one-time purchase here or subscribe and save. So depending on what you set for your account here, you should be able to change or basically uh, edit what type of subscriptions you offer for this specific product. In this case, you can go ahead and just choose that. And from there, they should be able to uh, avail your subscription. So by the way, just to give you information, you might want to, or they might request you to change your payment options to a different one. Like in this case, uh, you need to connect your people or even use uh, Shopify for your account in order for this application to work. But yeah, so that's about it. How to activate Shopify payments for non-US citizens. Now in this case, you might be wondering, how do you activate your Shopify payments for non-US citizens? Now in this case, we first need to discuss what is Shopify payments. Now Shopify payments is a payment method that you'll be able to leverage in your Shopify store if it's actually available. Now, typically Shopify payments is available for US citizens or people or businesses that is in the United States. Now, typically you know that you'll be able to start using Shopify payments whenever you go to your payment section. Now to do that, you just need to go to your settings at the bottom left here. And from here, you just need to go to payments. Now, from here, if you see the option that says Shopify payments, it means that currently your store can support Shopify payments. Now, setting it up can be kind of tricky, but in this case, you just need to click on complete account setup. Now, from here, just provide all the necessary information, like submitting your ID, 
linking your bank account as well as providing some personal information about yourself and turning on two-step authentication. In this case, once you provide all the necessary details here, you should be able to activate Shopify payments on your store. Now again, you might be wondering how do you actually activate that if just in case you're not in the US or if you're not a US citizen. Now, the thing here with Shopify payments, it actually supports a bunch of countries. Now, this is directly from Shopify's help center. Now, according to their bot, the Shopify payments option or payment method or to actually activate or start using Shopify payments, you need to be in the following countries. That includes Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, German, uh, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, New Zealand, Singapore, Spain, United Kingdom, and United States, excluding US territories except for Puerto Rico. In this case, as long as you're within or your business is within those regions or countries, you'll be able to start using Shopify payments. Now, in this case, since my shop is actually located in Australia, it's now it actually allows me to start using Shopify payments. But yeah, so as long as you're within those countries, you should be able to start using Shopify payments. Now, it also includes the United States here, but it also includes other countries. Now, in this case, what if you want to start using it? Well, if you really want to start using it, you need to change your current address on your shop or you need to migrate to a different country. Now, usually if you already have an existing store here, so what you need to do is you just need to go to your settings here, go to your store details, and under store details, you just need to go to the building information section. Now, typically, you just click on the edit button here and provide all the necessary information. That includes the address itself, the country or region here, the legal business name here, apartment suite, suburb, postcode, and the state and territory. Now, in this case, if you want to change your country, you'll need to deactivate the Shopify payments first. Meaning, what you need to do is you need to go to your payment section here. And from here, you first need to deactivate this first. Now, in this case, if you already have it active, make sure to actually uh, turn this off. But yeah, so if you haven't touched this, you should be able to change or update your current country. Now, if you need further assistance, you can reach out to their help center, which in this case, they have the bot here and they will able to, or they will give you the option to chat with a super support advisor for you to get this fix. But yeah, so, in this case, for you to start using Shopify payments here, you need to switch over to a different country or you need to migrate to a different country or set your store's location or store location here to a country that is supported. So one of the following countries that uh, Shopify payments here actually supports. So currently, that is the only way for uh, only way that we could use Shopify payments. Because again, not all countries support Shopify payments, that they, but they are actually improving their system. So hopefully in the future, we'll be able to get or access Shopify payments on other countries as well. But in this case, that's about it. How to use Shopify or we are going to discuss how does it actually works. So you might be wondering, what is Shopify? How does it work? What is it? So uh, we'll be giving you a few information about Shopify and as well how to use it and integrate it into your Shopify store. Now in this case, first, what is Shopify? So Shopify, uh, think of it as a, a pay uh, buy now, pay later option for buyers. Now this one is going to be something uh, really awesome because like for example, if your customer just really wants to buy the product that is available on your store, but they don't have the in or they don't have enough funds to basically buy the product, well they could use shop pay here as a means of paying for that specific product. Now it means they'll be paying in uh, uh, sections or in divided payments so they could choose the plan that they want to use for this option here so again shop pay is a buy now pay later option for your customers so in this case how do you cut how do your customers actually use shop pay here well the first thing you should do here is you need to adjust a few uh a few payments settings on your store so first things first, go to your store here, log in into your account, go to your settings at the bottom left of your screen, and from here you want to go to payments. 
Now, under payments, what we need to do is we need to first activate Shopify payments. Now, Shopify payments is going to be the default or the suggested option for your uh, site to basically use it as a means of uh, for your customers to actually pay for the products that you have right now on your Shopify store. But Shopify payments is not available on all countries. Like for example, uh, Shopify payments is available in Australia, but like uh, countries like of the Philippines and other countries that is not currently supported, you won't be able to see Shopify payments here. So it depends on where your store is actually located if Shopify payments is available. Now in this case, if Shopify payments is available on your country and immediately Shop Pay is going to be also available on that specific uh, account. Now in this case, what you need to do first is you first do, uh, first have to set up Shopify payments. So that it's going to request you uh, to verify your identity. So you might need to submit some a few documents verifying your identity as well as a few information about yourself. So like for example, your uh, address, your name, your full name, and your contact details and a lot more. But once you've set those up, and this same page here so basically it's going to be in the same page here where it's going to where you in you'll be able to set up shopify payments but again once you've set that up the next thing you want to do here is you want to go to manage here and from here you want to go to advanced settings now under advanced settings you have the option to turn on shop pay here or turn it off so by default it's going to be turned on once you have shopify payments but for uh, example you want to temporarily uh, disable this one just click on the uh, switch off your sh option here and as you can see you'll be able to deactivate shop pay here just click on deactivate but yeah so that's how you use a shop pay and uh, that's how it actually works or uh, that's a simple discussion on how or what it is basically. But that's about it. To activate international market in Shopify. So first thing that we need to do here is we need to go to Shopify.com, log in into our account and access our store. So sometimes when you actually are building your store and you notice that you can't ship to a specific region or to a specific market. Well, in this case, it means that you haven't set up your markets properly yet. Now, for us to do that, what we need to do first is we need to go to our settings at the bottom left here. So let's go ahead and click on settings here. And from here, we want to access markets. So go ahead and click on markets. Now, typically, depending on where you actually uh, put your store here, like for example, your store in Australia, and you set this up by default, the Australia uh, section or market here would be enabled or it's going to be active. Now, in this case, if you want to make sure that you actually ship to other countries or internationally, you need to enable the option here that says international or you need to create a new market. Like, for example, we want to go to international here. So just to give you an idea, these are the things that you need to change here. Like for example, the language and domains. Now in this case, if you want to change the domain here specifically to that uh, specific region, like for example, yourstorename.com.ca, which is Canada, or AU for Australia, if you want to do that, you could go ahead and do that as well. But in this case, most of the time, we don't uh, change this one. But if you want to change the language as well, you could go ahead and do that. But for now, we are going to retain the uh, default here. Now, also, you could set products and pricing for this specific uh, region. Like, for example, we also have the option here that says show prices to customers in their local currency. Like, for example, if you want to show a specific product in, like, well, peso, you could go ahead and do that. So just make sure that the show prices to customers in their local currency is enabled and they will be able to see the price itself on their currency. Now, also, you have the option to basically adjust the prices of the products that you have. Like, for example, if you want to increase the prices or the price of the products, like, for example, there's going to be a 2% 2 2 increase of that specific, for that specific product. You just need to basically include the 2% here. But if you don't want to do that, you could go and just include 0% here. Or if you, change, if you want to change this to price decrease, you could also do that as well. Now, in here, you have the option as well to basically include or exclude products for a specific markets. Like, for example, you aren't able to ship a aesthetic shirt for that specific market. You could go and click on that. And from here, click on exclude from market or include in market. So depending on what you choose here, you'll be able to customize which products actually appears on those specific markets. Now, let's just go back.
Now here we also have the duties and imports. Now in this case, you'll be able to basically edit the taxes. Now we all know that different regions or different countries have their own taxes and duties to, to basically adhere for. Now in this case, uh, it is recommended that you adjust your duties and import taxes here. So those duties or taxes depends on what region you want to. So if you want to turn it on, just click on turn on and from there you'll be able to edit uh, certain uh, collection duties and import taxes for that specific region as well. Now we also have the shipping here. Now, uh, basically editing your shipping here is really important. Like for example, for Canada, if you want to edit your shipping here, you can go ahead and click on it and click on manage and shipping here. It's going to redirect you to that specific section on the shipping and delivery. And from here, you should be able to basically add rates. Like for example, we want to basically add or create zones here. So first things first is you have to create your markets first before you create your zones here. So for example, if you already have your market, click on create zone. And from here, you should be able to easily choose a country. Like for example, we want to add more countries, regions, and markets. And from here, you should be able to choose or add more regions and markets. Like we said before, we need to first edit our basic our markets first before we'll, we'll be able to edit our uh, shipping zones here but for now let's just focus on markets now in here let's just go back into international and from here we also have the payments and taxes so if you want to add it or basically edit the taxes here just click on manage and you'll be able to add or edit the taxes for that specific region so in this case you can go ahead and click on edit variants here or even show all other countries from there you could you could basically click on it and you'll be able to change their uh taxes like for example australia collect gst here and a lot more now let's just go back into markets again in this case we want to go back to international we also have the payment methods here if you click on manage here it's going to load up another page wherein you'll be able to see how or what are the payments available here so for some countries shopify payments will be available so setting up your payments is really important here but if you already set this up uh we could go ahead and go to the next step now once you set up all the necessary details here what we need to do next is we need to click on the app right here which includes the active or inactive status so since we want to start using it just click on active here and from there just click on save at the top right and you should be able to basically update your settings here now if you want to create a new market just click on add market at the market page here and from here same thing you just need to basically edit or choose the following settings like for example we want to say this is for asia so just say type in asia here and you could go ahead and start using or selecting uh asian countries here like for example maybe we want to say all of asia here click on add market and once you've done that, it's going to load up another page wherein, again, you'll need to basically configure the same settings. But once you've done that, you could go ahead and click on the status here. So this marketing can be activated because 40 country regions are missing in shipping rates. So if you want to uh, basically activate this, you need to add shipping rates here. Just click on add rates here. And from then, you should be able to activate this one once you've adjusted all of those settings. How to change store currency on Shopify. So you might be wondering, how do you change your store currency here? So you might be new to Shopify here. And in this case, you might have entered the correct in current currency or you've decided to change it to a different one. Well, changing to cur your currency here on Shopify is actually pretty easy. Now, first things first, go to Shopify.com, log in into your account and access your store. Now, once you've accessed your store, you should be able to see your admin page here as you can see right now on my screen. Now, in this case, we need to access our settings. So at the bottom left of your screen, go ahead and click on settings. And from here, make sure that you're in the store details section. In this case, you don't need to switch on any of the following options here. Now, in this case, go ahead and scroll down a bit until we see the store currency section. In this case, you just need to click on the store currency that we see here, which is the tree dot icon. And from here, just use the option that says change store currency. Now, in this case, you can go and select your currency they want to use. So, for example, I want to use or I want to switch this over to USD. But in this case, it's going to give you some warning. So, in this case, uh, changing your currency will require you to review and update pricing across your store to prevent unexpected results at checkout. So, some ops can only support certain currency. Now, in this case, it's going to warn you of the following consequences. Like, for example, you might need to update the pricing that you have on your products that 
that is already existing on your store as well as check some apps if they are still working because some apps can only support certain currencies like usd aod or the more unknown or used currencies that they have right now now if you accept this risk you can go and click on i understand the risk and changing of store currency and the reason for changing now once you're sure, sure, just click on the other option here and just click on save and that would actually change your currency. Now it's going to again indicate that you need to check your pricing just to make sure that everything is correct. In this case, I'm going to actually revert this one to uh, my original one here, which is going to be AUD. But in this case, that's how you change your currency in Shopify. And that's about it. How to use Shopify for clothing brand. So first thing you need to do here is you need to have a Shopify account. Now in this case, typically you just need to go to Shopify.com and you should see a sign up button or start for free at the top right of your screen in the official website. And once you've created your account, you should be able to start creating your store. And as you can see, I've already created my store here. Now, by the way, if you want to have a full tutorial on how to create your account on Shopify, make sure to visit our channel. But in this case, let's go ahead and start creating our clothing brand store here so in this case you might be new so it's kind of confusing at first uh when you're starting to build your clothing brand for shopify here well first things first that we need to do is we first have to customize our store now to do that you need to go to online store here click on teams and from here you should be able to see the following option now by default the official team for your website is going to be done but you can change this to a different one so for example you have spotlight you have refresh here and a lot more now if you want to view other teams that you use you can go and click on visit team store and you'll be able to see it in this case we'll be searching for a team that we want to use so for example let's go ahead and search for a team that would actually suit our needs so maybe I want to use one of the following options here. So as you can see, some of the teams actually has a price on it. Like for example, this team is going to be 260 USD. So you need to pay 260 for you to start using it. But there are going to be free ones that you could use. So let's go ahead and choose a, pre, a free one here so that we won't be playing, uh, paying for anything. So for example, I want to use this one here. So the Spotlight team. So let's go ahead and click on it. Now from here, let's go and click on the try team here. And once you've done that, it's going to add in spotlight to your online store teams. And from here, you should be able to see your Shopify store again and back into your teams. In this case, spotlight is going to be in your team library. So let's just wait for it to load up properly. Now, once it's actually fully loaded, you could just go ahead and click on the publish button here. And from here, let's go and click on publish. Now, once you've done that, you should now be start using that specific team. In this case, we want to customize it uh, now. So let's go and click on customize. Now, from here, what we need to do next is we need to add the assets or the uh, sections that you want to use. As you can see, this one is actually pretty simple as you can see right now. So all we need to do first is we need to add the name of our store. So let's go to the My Store section here. And from here, we want to change a few things. So for example, I want to change the uh, option here for menu. So let's go, let's go and click on select menu. Let's go ahead and add the main menu footer here. Click on select so that we'll be able to basically uh, go to different menus here. So I'll be showing you how to go to the navigations later on. So here we have our collections. So in this case, if you don't have products yet, you can skip this part here. But later on, I'll be showing you how to create your collections as well. In this case, let's go ahead and scroll down a bit here and you'll be able to select your collection here. So in this case, you can go and click on change and basically choose the change collection here and choose your already existing uh, collection. And in this case, since we don't have anything yet, so let's go ahead and skip this one. Now from here, we need to add different sections here to make our shop or our store here a lot more interesting. So in this case, let's go to the uh, template section here, click on add section. And from here, we want to add image banner. So let's go choose this one. And from here, maybe I want to switch this over to the very top instead of it at the bottom. From here, we want to change a few things here. So in this case, maybe I want to uh, basically delete the buttons here. So since we don't need it, so you could go and select on it, click on the trash can icon at the left side here. And from here, we want to change the image banner here for a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, let's go and select on the image banner. 
And from here, what we need to do is we need to uh, hide our container. And from here, we want to change a few things. So for example, I want to change the image banner name here. So I want to say, I want to say this is going to be the name of my shop. So let's go ahead and enter the name itself. And we want to change also the uh, second text here. So we could go ahead and from, uh, so let's go ahead and just giving you the latest fashion trends. Now from here, we could go ahead and change the uh, options here as well. So maybe I want to say is, so in this case, I actually change the heading size here to large. And we now want to change the image of the image banner itself. So let's go back to image banner here. And from here, we want to select our image. So you can upload your own image here by clicking on select image here, but you can actually utilize their free images. So let's go and click on explore free images. And maybe I want to say uh, shop local here. And from here, I want to choose the appropriate image. So maybe I want to use this image here. So I go select that one, click on the select at the bottom right to save our changes and that should apply our changes. Now, once you've done that, you could change other options here. Like for example, the mobile layout here. Now, by the way, if you're not familiar yet, you can actually view your website here in mobile format as you can see right now. So it's just something really cool because you'll be able to have a preview of what your website is going to look like in mobile. In this case, once you've done that, we could go ahead and start adding uh, anything that we want to add here. So go ahead and save it first so that our changes will be saved. Now from here, well, let's go ahead and add another section. So maybe I want to add another section that actually uh, gives us a, uh, a preview on what our product is going to be. So go ahead, go ahead and add a slideshow. So maybe I want to delete the other sections here. So I want to delete this one. And on this one, uh, maybe I had another slide here. Slideshow, I want to hide a few things here. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe change a few things here. So maybe I want to add numbers instead. Or you could use counters if you want to, or dots if you want to. In this case, uh, you could go ahead and change the ambient movement here as well. Image behavior, team settings, and accessibility. So in this case, I've just selected one of the image slide here. And what we need to do is we need to remove other the other sections here. So maybe I want to remove this text here and this text here as well. And I want to also remove the background. So let's go and click on the show container desktop. And from here, the button label is going to be the only thing that we'll be seeing here. So in this case, let's go ahead and say check out our uh, fashion. And from here, what we need to do is we need to change the image itself. So go, let's go ahead and click on explore free images here. And from here, let's go ahead and choose men's fashion. And from here, I want to say I want to use uh, this one. Let's go ahead and click on select. And from here, what we need to do next is we need to go back and select the um, other image slide here. So let's go ahead and click on explore free images again. And from here, men's fashion again. And from here, choose the appropriate ones here. For example, I want to use this one here. Click on select. And that should apply changes. And finally, this last image here, click on explore again. Instead, let's use uh, women's fashion now. And from here, let's go and select this one and click on select. Now, in this case, whenever you, the uh, customer actually clicks on the following buttons here, they will be able to slide to different photos on your shop. In this case, let's go ahead and save it first before we proceed. So yeah, so make sure that when you go to the other slides here, you also remove the other sections like what we did before. So in this case, let's go ahead and remove the other sections that we don't need here. And yeah, so you could go ahead and just add the label again on your button. But in this case, you could also paste a link here. Like for example, if you want to redirect them to another page, whenever they click on it, you could go ahead and do that. But in this case, you could just go ahead and start editing your website here in whatever way. So make sure that you are within your uh, specific niche. Like for example, if you're into like tops or bottoms, make sure to highlight that. But in this case, let's go ahead and go back into our store here. So let's just go ahead and save it first. And I'll be showing you how to create your products as well as your collections. So let's go ahead and go to the product section here at the left panel. From here, let's go ahead and click on add product. 
And from here, you can go ahead and start adding your product. So for example, I want to add a t-shirt here. So this is just an example. So in this case, you also need to provide some description and you also need to provide some photos on it. So photos are really important whenever you're selling something online so that they'll have a preview of what you're selling. In this case, so this is just an example, but I'm going to upload this photo here. Click on open. And from here, you should be able to add your pricing. So for example, it's going to be $10. So in this case, if you have like, for example, if you are currently on a sale, you could also add a compare at price. So it's going to add a slash on the product itself. So it means it's currently on sale. Now, in this case, you also have the inventory section here. So it's to track the, qual to track the quali uh, quality of your products here. And if you have, if this is a physical product, you could indicate that. So for example, it's going to be 0 0.2 kilograms here. And if you want to add variations like colors, you can go ahead and do that. So for example, I want to add a black t-shirt and a white one. And from here, let's go ahead and click on save at the bottom right. Now, once you've done that, we are now ready to start adding our collections. So left panel here, let's go ahead and click on collections here. And from here, we, as you can see, we already have a collection that is available here. So whenever you click on it, you should be able to see the following options. So you have the title of the collection itself and the description. So this will contain all the collections or the, all the products that you have. But we want to create a specific one that's going to click on create collection at the top right. And from here, let's just, just say it is going to be tops. And from here, you could just go ahead and just add a description in whatever way. And you also have the option to add products here manually. So or, you, or you could actually add them automatic, automatically by using automated. So for example, for the uh, option here, let's go ahead and use the product tag here is equal to, let's just say it's going to be t-shirt. So whenever a product has the e uh, product tag t-shirt, they will be added to the specific collection here. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and click on the save at the top right here to see what changes. And from here, let's go back to our products, click on our product here. And from here, we want to go to product uh, type or the tags here. So let's go ahead and just add t-shirt. So go add t-shirt here. And from here, let's go ahead and click on save. Now in this case, whenever this collection is being called the top section, the following product should appear on your uh, collection. So in this case, let's go ahead and make sure that's actually correct. So let me just go back here real quickly. And from here, it should uh, say t-shirt. So go and make sure. All right, yep, that's correct. So let's go ahead and go back in here. So in this case, when we actually go back into our online store here and view our, uh, cause our when we actually view our editor here and edit our collection section, as you can see, uh, it's going to uh, feature the home section because we actually, that's the first thing that we saw here. So let's go and change this one, change collection. So instead of home page, we want to only choose tops here, like on select. And whenever we actually click on save, that will apply our changes. Now in this case, when you actually go to catalog here, you should be able to see all the products. Contact is going to be your contact page. Now, if you want to customize a specific page, you can go to the top section here and go to uh, the specific uh, page. So for example, you want to edit your product page, go to products, go to default products, and this is where you'll, you'll be able to see it. Now, in this case, those are the basics on setting up your Shopify for Shopify for a clothing line. And that's about it. So obviously there's going to be a lot of things that you need to know here in Shopify. So there's going to be ad sections, ad blocks, and there's going to be a lot of uh, elements that you could use here. But yeah, so those are the basics for now. Now, if you want to learn more, you could visit our YouTube channel here. We do tutorials for Shopify, but in this case, that's about it. Shopify for services. So how do you use Shopify for services? So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to have a Shopify account. So go to Shopify.com, create your account, and you'll be redirected to this page here. In this case, we need to start creating our store. So let's go ahead and click on create store here, and it will redirect us to the page cre creation for our store. So this might take a few seconds or a few minutes. So in this case, let's go ahead and wait for it to build our store. Now, once your store is actually created, you should be able to see your admin page here. Now, there's going to be some questions that you might need to answer here. So, for example, where would you like to sell? So, for example, may it be for an existing blog or uh, website or blog, an online store, or in person or social media. In this case, maybe I want to say in person. So, let's go ahead and choose this one. Click on next. 
Now from here, let's go ahead and answer this, uh, which of the best describes you. Let's go ahead and click on I'm just starting. And for what do you plan to sell first? So there are products, dropshipping products, print on demand, digital products, but we can go ahead and answer services as well. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and click on get started. Now, in this case, you should be able to see the setup guide here. So I recommend you to do all the things that you see here, like adding products, customizing your online store, name your store, add a custom domain, get point of sale, and a lot more. In this case, we'll be setting up the basics here for your uh, Shopify store for the services that you'll be offering. So first is we need to add our products or our services. Now to do that, we need to go to left panel here, go and click on products. And from here, let's go and click on add product. Now, in here, you just need to indicate what product or service they want to offer. Like for example, I want to offer counseling or let's just say consultation. Consultation, consultation. And from here, you can go ahead and just add description. So in this case, let's go ahead. This is a meeting for one hour. So we also all have the option to add media to our product service here. So let's go ahead and click on upload new. And from here, let's go ahead and choose our video. Now in this case, I'll be uploading a sample uh, photo here, but you could upload your own or your customized one. And from here, we could go ahead and just start adding the price. So for example, maybe I want to say it is going to be around a one or let's just say $10 for an hour. Now from here, let's go ahead and uh, change a few things. It costs per item here. You could actually skip this section here. You could just indicate the price if you want to. And here we have the inventory. So let's go ahead and disable this one since it's a service. And from here, this product has an SKU or barcode. So let's just skip this one. And from here, it's going to say this is a physical product. So let's go ahead and disable this one. And from here, we want to add variants. So in this case, maybe I want to say I want to add a different one here. So I want to say uh, the length or time. Let's just indicate time here. The values is in here is going to be one R, and the another value is going to be two R's. And from here, let's go ahead and add another one, which is three R's. And from here, let's go ahead and click on done. And from here, we have the following prices. So we have one R. We have two R's, so let's, let's go ahead and increase the price for it. Three R's is going to be the following price here, so let's just add another $10. Now from here, we could go ahead and click on save to save the changes for our product. So by the way, if you want to add like categories, product type, vendor, collections, and tags, you can go ahead and do that. So that's something really helpful something, sometime in the future whenever you're using like, for example, uh, collections. So if you want to add tags, it's a great way for you to organize the products that you have or services that you have. Let's go ahead and click on save at the bottom right. Now, in this case, once we've done that, we're now ready to start editing our actual site. So to do that, we need to go to the online store at the left panel here. And from here, what we need to do next is we need to start customizing it. In this case, let's go ahead and click on customize on our done team here. And from here, you should be able to start customizing your team. Now, by the way, uh, you could go ahead and just scroll down a bit here and you should be able to see uh, other teams that you could use. Like for example, uh, Craft here, they have Spotlight, Refresh, Down. If you want to view more, you could go ahead and click on Visit Team Store here. Now, in this case, you could just choose whatever team they want here, but for now, I'm going to use the default one. In this case, let's go ahead and click on Customize. Now from here, by default, the team that we got or the team that you'll be getting could be about selling products. So you might want to change a few things here. Like for example, the featured product section here. So in this case, to change the uh, elements that you see on your website, you could just basically go to the left panel here and you should be able to see the following options like any image banner, featured collections here. So you go ahead and click on that specific section for you to start editing. Now, the right side, you should be able to see different settings or customizations that you could change. Like for example, the heading here. So instead of featured products, so I'm going to say featured services. Now, we also have the description here if you want to add descriptions. And uh, uh, if you want to add collections as well, description style here, the maximum products to show. So there will be eight products that's going to be shown in the future services if you have eight products and the also enable view all collection if it has more products than shown now in this case there are going to be uh specifics here like image shape uh show record image on hover and a lot more so 
yeah so as you can see i could even change the our image shape here to an arc if i want to but for now maybe i want to say around here so it make it more interesting now in this case you could go ahead and do whatever changes so if you want to add another section you could go ahead and just click on add section here and from here choose whatever like for example if you want to add rich text here so that you'll be able to uh, basically uh, talk about your brand or your company so in this case you could go ahead and just say whatever here so by the way to change the text on the uh, following options here you just go ahead and click on it and go to the right side here and you'll be able to change the text as you can see i'm adding a few things here now if you want to change the button like for example you want to redirect this to one of your uh, for example, other websites or your blog, you can go ahead and just click on it and the, at the right side here, you can go ahead and just click on the options here that says uh, first button link. So you can just basically paste the link that you want to uh, redirect this button to. Now, in this case, uh, you could go ahead and start editing it. Like for example, this banner here, I want to change this to a different one. So let's go ahead and click on it, click on select images, select image if you want, you have already existing image, or you could actually use their already existing platform which you should be able to get free images. Let's go ahead and click on free images. And from here, maybe I want to say, I want to have the staff favorites here. And from here, I want to choose maybe this one. So I go choose this one. And as you can see, it's now updating itself. In this case, let's go ahead and click on select to make our changes. And from here, uh, we are now good. So you can go ahead and click on save at the top right here. Now in this case, customizing your site can be something uh, quite uh, hard at the first time, but as long, as long as you view or basically you see all the features available like adding blocks, adding sections here, it's going to be a lot easier for you. By the way, the elements that you'll be adding here, uh, the settings would change depending on what element that you're changing. So there are certain limitations, like for example, for text, they might not have that the customizations that you're looking for. But in this case, let's go ahead and go back. Now, it's also recommended that you adjust your, like for example, preferences. So by default, uh, your site will be uh, hidden. So in this case, make sure that you ha have or uh, insert passwords in it so that you, as long as your website is not yet done, you'll be able to lock your website. So typically it's going to be in the password protection section. So in this case, you just need to import your password here. And basically, it's going to protect yourself, and as long as they're not done, people will not be able to view it. But once it's actually done, you could just basically click on the restrict access to visitors with this password. But this option will only be available if you have a flat plan on Shopify. So in this case, I would suggest you to get a plan with them. They actually have a $1 a month plan that you could try for three months and see if your business would actually boom with Shopify. Shopify track your order page tutorial for beginners. In this case, how do we add or use a track your order page here? Well, what we need to do first is we need to basically add the actual page. So by the way, we will be integrating a code here, but you won't need to actually think about it because we'll be adding a link down below our description. So make sure to check that. We'll be adding the link for this code here. So just to give an idea here, we have two sections that we need to add. So first is going to be the email part of it. So in this case, we'll be replacing a specific email on our Shopify store, as well as a section or a uh, HTML section here, which in this case, we need to add uh, it ourselves. So in this case, let's go to our Shopify store here. And from here, let's go ahead and go to online store. And you want to go to pages. Now, this see in this case what we need to do is we now need to add our page here in this case go and click on add page at the top right and from here you want to name this as tracking so it doesn't actually mean much what you actually uh, do here but the most important part is going to be the uh template which in this case the default page which is going to be the empty page for uh, any templates that you'll be using on your page so so in this case make sure to use the default page here in this case, what we need to do next is we now need to see our HTML. So it would show you your editor here. So in this case, this is now our HTML. Let's go to our code here and you want to copy this one. So copy the whole thing for starting from the div section here up until to the script section. Let's go and copy this. And from here, let's just paste it. Now in this case, uh, what we need to do next is we now need to view the uh, or basically save this one first. Let's go ahead and save it first. 
But once it's actually saved, we should be able to start viewing it. So let's go ahead and click on view page. And this is what it's going to look like. Now, obviously, if you want to do or if you want to add design on it, you need to do some tweaks. But if you just want to bare minimum for now, uh, you could go ahead and just use this one. So in this case, once you've done that, let's go ahead and go back into our online store here. And we want to go to navigation. And we now need to add this into our main menu. Let's go and choose main menu here. And under main menu, let's go ahead and add our order. In this case, go ahead and add a menu here. So just give me an example. I'm going to delete this one. Let's click remove. Click on add menu item. And let's just say this is going to be a tracking. And from here, let's go and click on search or paste link, which in this case, uh, as you can see, it is not present here. So what I'd like to do is uh, I want to actually save the actual link. So since we actually already opened up the page for this one, the actual view for it, we could go ahead and just copy the actual link. And from here, let's go and go back and paste our link here. And from here, let's go and choose this one. Uh, so that will be able to apply the link itself. Let's go and click on add at the bottom right. As you can see, we now have tracking. Now, in this case, once we've done that, we are now ready to start adding the or editing the template itself. So in this case, at the bottom left, go and click on settings. And make sure to save your changes first. Like, Let's go and click on save menu first. Click on settings at the bottom left. And from here, let's go ahead and choose notifications. And under the notification, notifications, you want to click on the option for customer notifications. And you want to open up the shipping confirmation. In this case, go and click on edit code at the top right. Now, if this is the first time that you're accessing the, confirm the edit uh, code section here, you might need to verify your email. So in this case, just click on verify email here and just click on the link that will be sent to your email address so that you'll be able to confirm your, e uh, your email address here. So in this case, all we need to do next is we need to copy the whole thing here. We want to delete it. So once you've deleted it, all we need to do next is we need to go back into our code here and you want to copy the whole thing. So uh, in this case, you want to copy starting from HTML here at the very bottom. And you want to go to the very top and you want to copy this. So in this case, uh, to make things a lot easier for you, what I suggest you try doing here is first get the link again of the tracking page. So make sure to make the uh, open this up anywhere on your browser. So that's going to be a lot easier to access. Let's go and click on copy here. And we want to go back in here and we want to paste our link here. So in this case, uh, I would suggest you to, again, uh, go ahead and make a, uh, uh, a link or a document that is uh, in your uh, desktop first. But in this case, since it is an on online document and we don't have the capabilities of editing this, let's go and add, go back in here, paste it. Let's go and click on paste. And from this case, what we need to do is we need to look for the section that we'll need to replace. So typically it's going to be this one. So just see if we uh, just to make it confirm it. Let's go and click on uh, highlight this one. And you want to copy control F find uh, as you can see, this is it. Let's go and copy our link here, paste it. And once we've pasted this, let's go and click on paste. And once you're done, I could go ahead and click on the uh, option here for preview. So you can see it's now good. So in this case, you can go and click on send test email just to confirm things here. But once you've done that, let's go and click on save at the top right and go back. Now in this case, once we actually visit our stores, so let's go ahead and visit our store here. So by the way, any changes that you make on your Shopify store might take a while for them to actually reflect on your actual store. So in this case, uh, again, uh, you just need to wait for a few minutes or a few seconds for in order for them to apply. So in this case, in uh, our website, we now have home catalog contact and tracking, which is the navigation that we just recently added. Let's go and click on it. And as you can see, we now have our tracking page. In this case, what you need to do is you just need to enter the tracking number in here. Just click on track and you should be able to start tracking your order. Now, obviously, as you can see, it's quite basic here. Uh, if you want to add some design or some text on it, you can go ahead and go back into your pages. 
and make sure to uh, open up tracking here and add whatever. So for example, if you want to add some text on it or um, if you want to add some images, if you want to, as you can see in the section, go ahead and click on add image. So for example, I want to add this one as an example. We should be able to add it, but yeah. So in this case, you can even reposition it in whatever way you want. So let's just center a line here. And yeah, so let's go add a space here, let's save. And from here, let's, once we actually go back in here, we should now have the updated. But then again, some changes might not be are uh, visible immediately on your page. So it might take some time to uh, load it up. So let's just refresh it again and again until it actually appears. Uh, as you can see, it is now or it now has some images on it. How to run Facebook ads on Shopify. So first thing that we need to do here is we first have to make sure that we actually have the uh, proper or the appropriate accounts set up. So first thing you need to do here is you first have to ensure that you already have your Shopify store here. So create your Shopify account, create your store here. And once you've done that, Shopify should now be ready to go. Now, another requirement that you need here is you need to have a Facebook account as well as a Facebook page. Now, a Facebook page here is a way for you to access Meta Business Suite, which is something going to be really important when we actually set up our Shopify account with Facebook. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we need to log in into our Facebook account here. And from here at the top left, you should see the pages section. Go ahead and click on it and just click on create new page. And from here, just follow all of these steps here or fill out all the our details for you to successfully create your Facebook page. Now, once you've done that, we are now ready to start using or connecting Facebook into Shopify. Now, in this case, what we need to do is go back into Shopify here and we want to start to uh, basically connecting our account. Now, to do that, we need to install an app. So go to the settings at the bottom left here. And from here, you want to look for the apps and sales channels. And from here, you need to click on Shopify App Store. Now it should open up a new tab here, which in this case, you need to type in Facebook. So once you've done that, just press on enter and you should be able to see all the applications related to Facebook. Now I would rec recommend you to use the Facebook and Instagram application here. Go ahead and click on it. And once you've done that, click on the install button here. It should pop up another tab here, which in this case is going to ask you if you really want to install this application into your account. Go ahead and click on install. And once you've done that, it should actually redirect you to another page or the setup section for Shopify and Facebook. Now, in this case, just wait for it to load up and you should be able to see the next UI. Now, from here, what we need to do is we need to get started. So go ahead and click on the get started button here. And from here, it's going to ask you to connect your Facebook account. Now, from here, just click on connect account. And since you're already logged in into your account, it's going to automatically lock you in. And once you've done that, you should be able to see the business assets that you have. Again, you need to have a Facebook account here or sorry, a Facebook page for you to do this successfully. In this case, let's just choose our Facebook page here and just click on the connect button or option. Now there's going to be three options for us in here. So we have the conservative, enhance and maximum. Now, conservative is going to share some information for yourself, but it's going to be super limited. So it is recommended that you use the enhance here, which is the recommended one here. But if you want to view more details about it, you could go ahead and click on view details here. And from here, you could go ahead and just click on save once you've chosen the appropriate option. Now, once you've done that, you should be able to see the data sharing section. And from here, it's going to ask you to now connect your pixel. Now, in this case, if you don't have a pixel yet, just click on the create new button here. It's going to create another or a new pixel for you. But for now, I'm going to use my already existing pixel here. And once you've done that, it's going to give us or redirect us to the section for terms and condition. Now, I would recommend you to read their terms and agree. Uh, conditions here as well as their agreement just to make sure that you know what you're getting into as well as uh, if something w went wrong you should be able to protect yourself once you know the details for it now in this case let's go ahead and click on i agree and from here just click on submit for review now once you've done that it's going to finalize the channel setup which might take a few seconds or a few minutes now in this case let's just wait for it to load up 
Now, once it's actually complete, you should be able to see the pop-up here that says you're ready to start selling on Facebook Sales Shadow. In this, in this case, let's go ahead and click on Done. And from here, as you can see, we've just connected our Facebook account with our Shopify account. Now, in this case, we are now ready to start running ads through our Facebook ads. Now, to do that, just click on the Create Ad option here, and it should pop up another page, where in this case, you should be able to see your ads manager. Now in this case, you should be able to see the get started page here. So let's go ahead and click on get started. And from here, it's going to ask us to set up our ad account. Now in this case, we want to use our Facebook page here. So let's just uh, make sure that we select this one. Let's click on next. And from here, it's going to say, how will you pay for your ads? Now in this case, you could go ahead and click on add a payment method here, or you could go ahead and click on that now. So for now, let's just click on create ad, ad, ad campaign at the bottom right. Now in here, you should be able to start creating your ad campaign. So first is we need to answer this question here. So we need to choose our campaign objective. Now in this case, if you want to uh, basically add engagement, add awareness, add traffic, you can go ahead and choose whatever option you have here. Now from here, you have the buying type here. We have auction or reservation. We also have the option here for engagement. So again, you have the option for auction and reservation. So for now, maybe we want to add traffic here. So let's go ahead and choose that and just click on continue. Now from here, it's going to give you this option here. So it's going to give you the recommended settings here. But if you want to use a manual traffic campaign here, you can go ahead and do that. But for now, we're going to use the recommended settings here and just hit on continue. Now from here, it's going to redirect you to another page where in this case, you should be able to see this section here for using recommended settings. Now in this case, you need to enter your campaign name here. So for example, I want to so want to say it is going to be a test campaign. And from here, we also have to choose the special ad categories. Now in this case, you go ahead and choose this one. So maybe I want to say this is for uh, employment or if you want to choose a different one, you could go ahead and do that. So in this case, uh, you have the countries here as well and choose one. And you also have the option to enable the A-B and test here to help improve ad performance, test versions with different images, text, audi audience, placement so crazy, which will be shown to separate groups of audience. Now, you also have the adv advantage campaign budget here, but it's going to say advanta advantage campaign budget will distribute your budget across currently delivering, delivering ad ad assets to more results depending on your performance now if you want to enable the settings here you could go ahead and do that but for now let's go ahead and click on the next option or button now from here it's going to say conversion location so choose where you want to drive traffic you will need to enter more details about the destination later now in this case maybe you want to say we want to send this to a website now from here we have the performance goal here so maximize number of link clicks but you also have the other option here like maximize number of landing page views maximize daily unique reach maximize number of conversions maximize number of impressions but for now let's just click on maximize number of link clicks and from here we want to basically indicate our cost, cost per result goal. Cool. But this is going to be optional, so if you want to skip that, you can go ahead and do that. Also, we have the show more options here if you want to further expand what your ad is going to be. Now, when you get charge or delivery type here as well. Now, from here, we also have the budget and schedule. Now, the daily budget for uh, this one is going to be 800, but if you want to increase this, you could go ahead and do that. So, for example, our budget is going to be around 1,000 Philippine peso here. But depending on the where you're currently located or your page is currently located, the currency for it will be changing. So if you're in, like, for example, the United States is going to say USD, but if you're in Australia, it's going to say AUD. Now from here, we have the start date as well. And if you want to set a end date for this campaign, you could go ahead and do that as well. Now from here, we also have the budget scheduling here. So you could basically schedule your budget, increase in advance based on certain days or times when you anticipate higher sales opportunity. Like for example, if you expect on Saturdays or Sundays, you expect that you have more link clicks, then you could basically uh, increase the budget for it. Now also we have the audience here. So for example, if you want to create new audience here. So for example, we have the current, uh, current location here, which is the Philippines. But if you want to add existing audiences or create a new one, you can go ahead and do that as well. Now from here, the age group is going to be 18 to 65. So you could go ahead and change this to whatever number that you, want, you wish here. Now also you have the gender here if you want to target men or women only or all. Now in this case, you could go ahead and change here the placements if you want more as uh, one to as well. And but for now, let's just click on the next button. 
Now from here, it's going to give us this new traffic ad recommended. Now in this case, there's going to be some information you need to fill out here. Like as you can see, the ad name, partnership ad if you want to enable that, the Facebook page that we'll be using here, which is this uh, Facebook page that I have right now. Also, you have the option to connect your Instagram account here if you want to. And we also have the ad setup here as well. So in this case, I'm going to use create ad here. And from here, we have ad creative. So if you want to add a primary text, headline, description, and a lot more here, like call to action. So learn more, get offer, get promotions, get show times, listen now or order now. In this case, I'm going to use order now. And from here, we have the instant uh, experience, the website here, which is going to be the website uh, for our Shopify account, as well as our browser add-ons, like for example, call, WhatsApp, Facebook event, or phone call as well. Here we have the languages, the tracking, and the uh, URL parameters. Now in this case, once you've done that, you just need to click on the publish button at the bottom right of your screen, and you should be able to start publishing your Facebook ad here. I also, just a few reminders, it is recommended that you connect your payment method first because when you actually click on publish here, it's going to redirect you to the ad payment method page for you to successfully publish your ad here. But that's about it. Shopify order fulfillment process. In this case, you might be wondering, how do you actually fulfill orders or what is the fulfillment process here in Shopify? Well, in this case, it's actually quite simple. So first things first, go to Shopify.com and you want to log in into your account. Now at the left panel, we have the following options. We have home, orders, products, and customer. So uh, I am assuming that you're not or you're not new to Shopify here. So in this case, for you to show or to see all the orders that you have right now in your store, you need to go to orders. Now. In the order section, you should be able to see all the orders from your customers. So in this case, it will be in different statuses. So for example, we have the paid status yield here. We have the payment pending as well. So in this case, if you also have like canceled orders, this is where they will also be uh, appearing. Now in this case, as you can see, we now have one order here that is unfulfilled. So in this case, like for example, if someone bought from your store and uh, in this case, the status is still unfulfilled. So what are the things that we could do here? So in this case, let's go open up this order first. Now, what we need to do is we need to first see what are the details that we could actually access within this page here. So in the main UI, we have the location or the shop location where the uh, user actually bought the product. They also chose what is the shipping method that is available right now on our store and the products that they bought. Now, in this case, just underneath this section, you have the payment section, which includes the payment that they did. So in this case, uh, there are some cases that people could actually pay for the product in a later date. So in this case, the current status of my payment here is payment pending. Now, before we could actually fill any items or any of the items here, we first need to make sure that the payment is actually, uh, for example, it's actually fulfilled or the payment has been given to us. So in again, in some cases, the payment is not yet given out to us. So what you need to do is you first need to send an invoice. Invoice is a receipt or not exactly you see here, it's more of a uh, request to, hey, you need to pay this. So in this case, you can go and click on send invoice here. And from here, you need to indicate the two, which in this case, the email address of the customer, which typically is going to be at the right side here under contact information. So in this case, at the right side, you should be able to see their phone number, their contact or the email address, some notes from the customer if they added any, and their billing address. We also have the conversion summary here. So in this case, if there are any conversions in here. Uh, they also have fraud analysis here, but in this case, it's uh, actually a great thing that Shopify offers here. And a comment section. So I'll be showing you later on what those actually do. But for now, let's go and click on send invoice. Now in this case, enter the email address of your customer. And in here, you also want to indicate the subject. So, so in this case, make sure to indicate the actual uh, product. So in this case, you could go ahead and enter whatever here. Like for example, order um one two three if you want to if you want to add any uh specific subjects in here 
And if you want to add a custom message here, like for example, hey, thank you for shopping with us, uh, requesting payment for this product, you can go ahead and indicate that. But the template for the actual um, email for this one, it can be added, uh, edited via the notification section. So in this case, I'm going to open this up in a new tab so that you'll have some idea if you want to edit it. So in this case, you want to go to customer notification and from here we want to actually uh, basically get the invoice here. So in this case, we have the order invoice. And from here, this is the uh, look or the current look of that specific invoice that we'll be sending later on. So if you want to edit this, you need to click on edit code here. And from here, it's going to be an HTML and uh, in format here. So if you want to edit it, you need to learn more or a bit of HTML if you want to start editing. But at the very bottom, you have the revert to default, just in case that you um, done something that actually um, uh, change anything or so something here that actually ruins the template itself. But going back, uh, I just need to indicate all the necessary details here or the bare min minimum. And you could go and click on the review invoice. So this is an example. I'm going to enter this email here. And from here, let's go and click on review invoice. You should be able to see the current format. And you want, if you want to go ahead and send this, you go and click on send invoice. Now, so since we sent an invoice, what we, we could, what we could do here is we could go ahead and scroll down and view a few things that happened on our orders, like the timeline here. As you can see, the, when the payment terms for this order is, was created or when the confirmation for order is created and the order that this uh, or the date this order is, was created. So in this case, uh, you could go ahead and resend an invoice uh, if necessary. But the great thing here is they will send or they will actually save the uh, email here. So as long as there is some data here in the email section. Now, in this case, uh, you could go and click on collect payment here. Like for example, if they gave you the card for it. So I doubt for that. But if you do have access on it, you could go and enter the card number, the expiry date, the CVV, and name and card. But you also need to indicate the uh, billing address here. But if they or if you already have like a shipping address here, it, that will be used instead. So uh, in this case, you could also use the mark as paid. So if they've paid in a different method and you were able to confirm it, you could go and click on mark this as paid. So as an example, I'm going to mark this as paid. And as you can see, it is now paid. So since this is now paid, what we need to do now is we now need to fulfill this item. So just in case like something like, for example, the item or uh, for some there's some uh, delay on the item itself, what you could do here is you could actually um, uh, do a few things like uh, leaving a comment here uh, just to keep track of things. If you need to add some notes, you can even duplicate the order to top right. You can cancel the order. You could archive and yeah. So in this case, in some cases, if like, for example, if the product itself is no longer available and uh, this user already gave out their payment, you could actually make a refund at the top right here. So if you click on refund, that would actually initiate your refund and you can indicate how much of the item is going to be refunded and the amount that will be refunded here. So in this case, uh, it's going to be manual here, but it's going to be automatically the whole uh, amount here. And just to give you some idea, the refund method here is the original payment that they made will be the one that will be refunded. So for example, you use their card, their card will be refunded for that specific price. But it might take a few days, especially if they use, like for example, if they're using Shopify payments, I think it will take a bit more time than usual. But yeah, you just need they just need to wait for a few days before they receive their refund. But we don't want to do that. Let's go click on leave page here. And yeah, so to fulfill this item, let's go ahead and click on fulfill item here. Now in this case, it's now going to ask us uh, how uh, how many of the items going to be fulfilled. So in this case, since we only have one item, how heavy it is. So the weight here depends on what weight you actually uh, added on the actual product page they have. Now in this case, you also have the notify customer of shipment. So you could go and click on send shipping details to your customer now. And in this case, uh, they need to indicate their ship, uh, shipping address here as well. But in this case, you can go and click on print packing slip here. So what you need to do is you need to print this packing slip and uh, basically add it in the actual 
box of the product that you'll be setting out. But once you were able to uh, give this out or once you were able to ship this out, you could go ahead and click on fulfill item here. And that will actually fulfill the item. As you can see, it is now fulfilled. But one more thing you need to do here is you also need to click on add tracking here, add the tracking number and the shipping carrier here. So they have a lot here. You can go ahead and click on any of the available uh, shipping carrier here. You can also add another tracking number just in case if you want to add, like for example, if you're uh, picking it into, or for example, you're adding or you're using two shipments for this product or this order, uh, you could go and add them as well. Shopify Pulse Lite versus Pro in 2024. So we'll be showing you the pricing and features of it. So you might be wondering, what is this website that we are currently viewing? So this is actually from the official website of Shopify. So go to shopify.com slash POS slash pricing. Now, if Shopify, if uh, if you're accessing Sp Shopify from your uh, specific region, like for example, mine is actually in the Philippines. So it's going to say PH slash post pricing. Now, alternatively, you can actually Google it on your computer. So you just type in post pricing Shopify and you should be able to see the same link that I'm viewing right now. So in this case, uh, what is the differences and the pricing for Shopify uh, Post Lite and Pro? Now, in this case, uh, notably, the Shopify Post Starter Lite plan or the starter uh, plan here is um, automatically included in every standard Shopify plan, meaning there are no additional charges for utilizing Shopify Post Lite. So this integration is advantageous, especially for beginners or occasional in-person sellers. So as it offers a straightforward and cost-effective way to manage transactions. Now let's distinguish between Shopify Post Lite and Shopify Post Pro. So the suitability of each largely depends on your business model and requirements. Now, if your sales primarily occur online with occasional in-person transaction, then Shopify Post Lite is likely sufficient. Now, it's a straightforward use uh, to use economical and seamless integrated with standard Shopify plans. However, if you operate a retail business with multiple locations and require advanced features for managing staff, inventory, and customer relationships, then Shopify Post Pro or the retail plan here is the ideal choice. Now, while Shopify Post Lite is adequate for initiating in-person sales with minimal staff and product offerings, its capabilities are somewhat limited compared to Shopify Post Pro. As your business expands, you may find yourself outgrowing the functionalities of the Post Lite and seeking the comprehensive features offered by the Shopify Post Pro. Now, with Shopify Post Pro, you gain access to a range of advanced features designed to enhance customer engagement, streamline the operations, and drive revenue growth. So this includes customizable checkout options, robust reporting tools for analyzing sales performance, and the ability to manage multiple locations seamlessly. While there is a additional monthly fee for each location with Shopify Post Pro, the benefits in terms of scalability and operational efficiency outweigh the cost. So particularly for multi-store retail businesses. So by leveraging Shopify Post Pro, you can effectively manage your growing business, maximize customer loyalty, and make informed business decisions. Now, ultimately, the choice between Shopify Post Lite and Shopify Post Pro depends on your business specific needs and growth trajectory. Now, if you're starting out or have minimal in-person sales, then Shopify Post Lite may suffice initially. However, as your business expands and acquires more advanced functionalities, transitioning to Shopify Post Pro will enable you to scale operations efficiently and unlock new growth opportunities. How much Shopify charge? So we'll be showing you the Shopify pricing plans. So first thing that we need to do here is we need to go to Shopify.com. So go ahead and go to Shopify.com, log in into your account, and go to your store here. So typically, uh, with how Shopify actually works, uh, you could actually try or open up a shop here for free for um amount of time so if you just want to try some features like create a sample store you could basically use it for free but the only problem here is you if you want to legitimate legitimately use their services well you need to basically pay a spe specific plan for you to start using it 
but I'll be showing you some secrets here and some information to save up if you want you if you really want to try their services so just to give you information here so it's able okay for you to get started on your plan or getting plans on shopify here usually you go to your settings at the bottom left here and you go to the plan section so as you can see currently i have my plan here which is around one aod per month so i'll be showing you how to get that in shopify so in this case, uh, you also have the option here to change your pay method and view your features on what is included in your plan. So also, if you haven't subscribed to any plans yet, this is where you'll be able to uh, see any plans or uh, view what are the features for those specific plans. But in this case, what we need to do first is view the pricing that they offer on Shopify first. So currently, this is the official website from Shopify. So this is how they actually currently charge their plans. Now, we have the basic here, which is charged by 25 USD or, or US dollars here per month. We also have the Shopify for small businesses. So this is 65 USD per month. And we also have the advanced here, which is 399 USD per month. Now, depending on what type of plan that you get here, you'll be able to access certain features on it. Like for example, if you compare the three plans here, they have reports. But the only difference here is for basic here, you only get basic reports. For Shopify for small businesses, is you'll get the professional reports. But for advanced users, they have the custom report builder. So if you use the advanced here, you have the capabilities on generating or basically uh, getting your own customized report. Now, depending on how you set your uh, report builder here, you'll be able to get customized reports on that. Now, in this case, uh, you have the option to add uh, staff counts here. Like for basic, you have the two. Shopify is five and advanced is 15. So if you really have a big uh, store using advanced here, you'll be able to add 15 staff. Now, in this case, oh, how do we actually get the $1 Per month well the good thing about Shopify here is if you're just trying out their services they actually offer you one dollar a month for three months now if you just want to sample their services and try it for three months then in this case they will give you this offer here as you can see in my account I actually am currently using that so when we go to the plan section here you should be able to see it now, in this case, again, depending on what your needs are right now, you'll be able to uh, basically choose from them. Now, if you're just starting out, I would suggest you to use the basic here. But if you're already established business and you already have a specific uh, following online or a specific uh, following online, then you might want to try using Shopify for small businesses. But if you're a big company or you're just thinking of expanding it, you could use the advanced option here. Now, in this case, this is where you actually uh, get your plans. So what you need to do here is you need to enter or add your payment details. And from here, you should be able to subscribe to a plan here on Shopify. Now, just a few information here. Their pricing actually changes a bit. So sometimes they would update this. So make sure to check it out consistently because you might uh, be wondering why am I charged this specific amount they might have changed it they might have uh, applied some changes on their plans here you may you might get some notifications to that but yeah so the, those are the plans and pricing that is available here on Shopify now also if you're thinking of uh, using other apps or uh, ad additions here on your websites those are separate charges so this is just the basic plans that you have right now, but uh, talking about apps that they offer here that are paid, those are separate things. So it's on top of the uh, plans that we'll be buying here on Shopify. But that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and watch our next video. How to fix SSL pending error on Shopify store. So there's actually multiple things that you should be checking here and fixing for you to probably fix this issue for your SSL pending status. So one of those things is you have to ensure that your domain is actually properly set up. So first thing is you need to go to your admin page for Shopify and log into your account and access your store. And once in here, you need to go to your settings at the bottom left. 
And from here, you need to go ahead and open up the domain section here. So go ahead and click on domains at the left panel here. And from here, you want to make sure that the domain that you actually set up, especially if you have a, uh, a domain or a customized domain for your store. Now, once you've uh, checked your domain here, you need to click on it and make sure that it's actually properly set up. Now, if the settings here are not enough, what you, you can need to do here is you need to visit the actual website where you got your domain. So once in there, what you need to do is we need to uh, disable a few things here. Because sometimes if you, especially if you actually add a URL DRX or actually added a uh, uh, port uh, forwarding from for your domain then you might have this issue here so for example you want to disable URL redirects for your uh, hosting or your domain through GoDaddy so you've got your domain from GoDaddy what you need to do here is you just need to type in the following which is disable URL redirect in GoDaddy and Google now from here it's going to give you some steps on what you need to do here to disable or remove domain forwarding now, the steps that you need to follow here depends where you got your domain. Like for example, this is the steps for GoDaddy. So in this case, you just need to follow the steps for you to remove the URL or the uh, domain forwarding option here. Now in this case, once you've done that, that would actually probably fix your issue because most of the problem that you, you receive for pending SSL is actually from this uh, type of configuration. Now, another thing that you might need to check here or need to uh, basically wait for is to basically just wait a few hours. Usually, uh, if your domain is actually pretty new, uh, sometimes the changes itself might take around 48 hours before your SSL is actually given to you or verify that you actually own that specific domain itself. Now, in this case, usually just wait for 48 hours and it will actually resolve itself. Now, in this case, uh, you should be actually good. So those are the things that you can do here. First is you need to disable URL for wording. And second is you just basically wait for 48 hours for you to actually uh, have it fixed because there's going to be a whole process for it, like verification, certificate insur insurance, uh, the installation itself. So they need to first verify and install and make sure that you actually own that specific domain. How to delete the Shopify account. Now, in this case, you might be wondering how do you actually delete your account for Shopify? Now, in this case, if you're getting small sales and you've decided to basically close your store, well, this one is actually pretty easy. So there are going to be a few things that you should be checking here before you actually delete your Shopify store. But in this case, I'll be showing you what are those details that you should be checking. Now, in this case, first thing you want to do is you want to, get, to, want to go to Shopify.com, log in into your account, and access your store. Now, once in your store, what we need to do next is we need to access our settings. So at the very, very bottom or the bottom left corner of your screen, you should see the settings button. So let's go ahead and click on it. Now, from here, you should be able to see different options. But for now, let's go ahead and click on plan. Now, under plan, this is typically where you'll be able to see the deactivate trial option. So if you click on the activate trial here, it's going to say or ask you what is the main reason you are closing your store. Now in this case, select the appropriate reason here. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and add additional uh, details about it and hit on continue. And you'll be able to basically deactivate your store here or basically just close it. Now in this case, before doing that, I would suggest you to first check a few things. In this case, you might, uh, sometimes users might get, uh, or might still get charged on certain things here if you don't do it properly. So first things first is you want to go to billing and you want to make sure that you unlink your card here. Now, also, you want to also check your apps here. So if you're paying for any applications or if you've installed any applications here that is paid, you might want to consider closing those applications first or canceling their plan first before closing your account. Now, in this case, if you also have a domain or precise domain for your account, you might want to also transfer this to a different user or just basically disconnect it so that you'll be able to start using it in a different platform. But in this case, once you've done all of those details, the next thing you want to do, go back to plan here, click on deactivate trial, answer necessary details, and just hit on continue. And from then on, you should be able to basically close your store here and just click on deactivate store. And from here on, you should be good. And that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and watch our next video.